And that was all I could come up with. <laughs> and now we know how he spends his days. SpongeBob? Hi, how are you? Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up, if you would please. <laughs> Today we're diving back into r slash neckbeard stories, beep, beep, beep. but actually, you know, it does come from the neckbeard story subreddit. You thought that I was going to say it comes from r slash red x reads, but not this time. This has been uh, requested by two or three different people. It is the journey to reform a neckbeard series. Five parts, all posted. This was put up uh, four months ago, so I guess I'm a little late getting to it. I know Moon Horse has covered it already, if you haven't uh, seen those interpretations. But as usual, I give my own little spin, you know? Who knows what kind of side stories and tangents we'll get into when I start reading a neckbeard story. You always gotta put your own little je ne sais quoi into it, you know? And I think that's why it's so fun to listen to different stories, even ones I've already heard before, because people put their own spin on it. Like Walter Fate was reading the Wheezy Beard Saga, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty sweet, you know? He, he does it much differently than I do. There's room for all of us to live our dreams, is what I'm saying, and I dream of cringe every day, every night. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. We'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this neckbeard stories cringe. My journey to reform a neckbeard part one. Oh my god, it's a wholesome beard story. Maybe a happy ending, but not in a weird way. <laughs> Welcome, user, a random teacher. Hello, everyone. I am but a humble teacher here to tell a story. What do you teach? Life lessons? <laughs> <laughs> I recently found YouTubers like Fun With Failure, Hell Freezer, and Vincey, and decided to make this Reddit account to tell this story. Well, who's missing from this list? What's going on here? There's no accounting for taste, I guess. Although, I did get mentioned in the comments. Not that I'm, you know, offended or something when I, I don't get the name drop, but I really do like when I get the name drop. <laughs> uh, Hopefully you're you're lurking on the channel now, user or random teacher. And if you're not, then yeah, I hope that my reading of your story will will spur you to do so. Anyways, also if anyone can point me to another Reddit YouTuber, I would love to watch them. Oh my god, I know. <laughs> yeah, I might know some Reddit YouTubers. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to do the plug. It's fine. It's fine. We're already doing it. We're here. Ooh, deep breath. <laughs> but anyways, here today, we have the story of the journey that I went on to reform a neckbeard, who is currently one of my closest friends. Well, good. That bodes well for the ending. It's not going to turn out like Osgood. <laughs> that was not a good to reform a neckbeard story. If you haven't seen it already... Uh, maybe look it up if you think you're ready. <laughs> I decided to tell this story because all the stories that I was hearing about neckbeards were so negative and depressing that I needed to spread a little bit of joy. Yes, this will be my sanctuary series, I do suppose. I'll be like, oh, unfortunate nookie, that was horrible. Now we could go back and, and read something that makes me feel kind of good. And uh, the unfortunate nookie OP, Greeny, was actually one of the people that suggested this to me. So yeah, here we are, taking a little break <laughs> from the sad times and the depressing times. Although I do kind of like that too, on certain days. December's just a really difficult month for me, honestly. Birthday, Christmas, family on the other side of the world, like, yeah, it's weird. But we ain't gonna go there right now. Now, of course, there will be some cringe. But yeah, that is to be expected from a beard story. Oh, delicious cringe. <laughs> but enough of that, it is time to introduce the characters. R.O.P., call him Teach. At the time, your standard college fook boy and a former high school weirdo. Slightly overweight, but super into lifting weights due to playing football in high school. 
Also into nerdy things, which of course is how I met the beard in question. Yeah, it's always good to lift, bro. Only thing I really lift is my fat ass off the computer chair to go get a Red Bull, but you're doing great. <laughs> I should really get back into the gym. Maybe after the holidays. We've got Ed, of course, who is the beard. A very overweight, typical neck beard. I named him Ed for his use of quotes from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. If you know, you know. You're the son of a goat herder, <laughs> or something like that. Rolf was the son of a shepherd. Now Rolf is the posterior of a duck. Rolf is the only person worth quoting from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. We also went to high school together, but didn't really talk much. He had all of the neck beard tendencies. So kind of like the stealth beard OP. They made friends during college, kind of knew each other in high school, but not really. I will, of course, be quite interested to see how deep his neck beard tendencies go. And so, our story begins in the year of our Lord, 2017. I had just graduated from community college and had finally begun attending a four-year college. In the fall of my freshman year, my persona as a Fook boy had begun to develop. Apparently, being quiet, strong, and slightly good-looking makes all the ladies interested. Oh yeah, a little self-flex in there. <laughs> but enough ego stroking. Time to get into the story. At least he acknowledges it, I guess. <laughs> I don't understand how that's relevant to anything, but uh, I guess it'll come into play, I hope. So, I'm sitting in the student center, trying to do some homework, and then I feel the entire booth shake as someone tries to sit opposite of me. It's Ed. Hey, I don't know if you remember me, but we went to school together. OP? Oh yeah, I remember. Didn't we used to play Yu-Gi-Oh at lunch? Ed? Yeah, how you been, man? I thought you said you didn't really talk too much. You just played Yu-Gi-Oh? It was like a strictly dueling type of relationship? <laughs> I think you were closer to this dude than you want to admit, OP. We started doing some back and forth and catching up. All the while, I'm trying not to make a face at his smell. Unbrushed teeth, unwashed socks, he was wearing Crocs. <laughs> he smelled of sweat and poop. And we can't forget the Axe body spray attempting to cover up this melange of disgusting smells because, of course, yeah, that totally works every time. <laughs> Don't cover up your own pheromones. Embrace your smell. That's how you get all the ladies. <laughs> and then the lady at the counter calls his number and Ed goes up to get his food. This man comes back with, and I shit you not, two orders of chicken tenders, fries, and a lot of that good old honey musty. I mean, I could smash down two orders of chicken tenders pretty easy too, but... Yeah, uh, uh, I'm a big boy, and getting bigger. <laughs> I just stare at this man as he scarfs down this feast of beardery. You ever see someone so out of shape that they sweat when they eat? <laughs> uh, not recently, thank God. Yeah, that was this guy. He was stuffing his face with fried food and trying to talk at the same time about I'm glad he had been doing since high school. And how awesome I was for getting all the bitches. <laughs> I did not, in fact, have all of the bitches. Just some. Yes, indeed. Being a womanizer. Very admirable. <laughs> I'm sure there's some people out there that dig it. But, um, yeah, it's just not my cup of tea. I was getting sick of his smells and the general sight of this beard. So I bolted out of there. He then comes to find me a little bit later in a different building and sits by me once again. Ed? Hey man, can I talk to you? OP? Uh, what's up? Ed? Uh, how do you talk to people? <laughs> You're doing it right now! <laughs> OP? Uh, what do you mean? Ed? Uh, I want to make new friends because I don't have any. You seem to be so good with people, and you're my only friend. Can you help me not be terrible with people? Alright, sure, yeah. It all starts with a shower. 
So get in there, brush your teeth, come on back, and then we can start. <laughs> I started feeling bad for this man. I mean, we were friends back in high school, and he never did anything that bad outside of some minor creeping on women, which is uh, kind of gross, depending on how hefty that creeping was. So I decide that I was going to help this man. OP, well, just talk about things that you like. Who knows, you might find something that you have in common with people. So, I invited him to hang out with a couple of my friends at the student night later on. So, the time comes and we're about to head to the event. When I go to pick him up, he's wearing a fedora, spiky leather bracelets, and a leather jacket. Hey, that's pretty cool, but you lose the fedora. I totally dig the, the punk vibe though. Is 30 too old to be wearing spike bracelets? I think not! And a good leather jacket? I mean, that's timeless. <laughs> Come on, especially if it's a nice one. <laughs> OP, no, you aren't wearing that. I said I would help you, and help starts with you not looking like a teenage edgelord. Go change, Ed. Uh, but it makes me look tough. He's got a point, <laughs> OP. Dude, just go change. I'm not taking you out in public like this. You want to get made fun of? Now call it a hot take if you want, but I'm of the opinion that confidence comes from within. Changing your clothes and doing all this stuff is not going to make anybody perceive him any differently, especially if you didn't advise him to shower already. That's probably the, the one biggest hurdle. <laughs> he needs to smell not disgusting. If he's got the balls to wear some spike bracelets, if it makes him feel more confident, then I'd say, yeah, let him do it. Who's gonna judge you for that? Really, what's most important is that you're comfortable in your own skin. And then the social anxiety starts to unravel, and you're like, okay, I feel like I can talk to some people now. So while I guess it's nice that OP has agreed to help out, in my opinion, this is going completely ass backwards. <laughs> Just have him go hang out with the punk or goth kids. Oh wait, they're going to a student night. There's definitely no punk or goth kids. <laughs> Maybe OP does have the right idea after all. You know me, I'm just talking out the side of my neck as usual. He eventually does go to his room and he changes. He still smells terrible and I tell him bluntly about the smell. Oh God bless. He goes into his room, showers and changes clothes. He comes out smelling better, but of course, this isn't quite enough. He then pulls out a can of Axe Body Spray and begins to spray basically half of the can onto himself. Uh, well, at least he showered, so that's progress, I guess. Did he brush his teeth? Why does he still smell terrible? <laughs> Doesn't the shower heal all wounds? Maybe he's just festered for far too long. He has a fungal growth somewhere that needs to get taken care of. <laughs> Anyways, we finally head to the event. Things are going well, and a couple of girls come to sit with the four of us. And this makes Ed very nervous, as talking with women is not his strong point. He gets quiet and starts thinking. I could tell by the way that he placed his hands on his face. Now, warning, what he says next honestly sounds fake, but I kid you not, this is exactly what he said. Ed... So, uh, do you guys like hentai? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, good try, Ed. <laughs> Not quite. It is a thing that he likes, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, boy, my favorite seat. FBI, open up! God, that's classic. Everyone gets quiet and just stares at this man for a few seconds. Ed then begins to frantically ramble on about uh, how sorry he was and he doesn't know why he said that. Everyone at the table then begins laughing at him and making fun of him. He then starts crying and runs off. I run after him and find him in a different building crying by himself. Aw, oh, Ed, you almost had it. The, the spike bracelets and the leather jacket would have made all the difference. He probably would have felt confident enough to just stay quiet, play the cool, quiet, tough guy. That's basically always the move to make if you can't find something to say. 
You can't really force a conversation. It's only gonna turn out awkward, but I guess this is something that must be learned in time. OP says, dude, are you okay? Ed, you don't need to be here. I'm just gonna screw it up again. OP, so why did you say that? Ed, you told me to talk about things I liked. <laughs> I called it. Oh, that's wonderful. And that was all I could come up with. <laughs> <laughs> and now we know how he spends his days. SpongeBob? Hi, how are you? OP? Yeah, but that obviously means, like, talk about sports or something socially acceptable. Porn is not acceptable. <laughs> uh, you didn't clarify any of this. It's like computer programming. You gotta be very specific with what you're telling this dude. Ed, I'm sorry. I have autism and uh, social things are hard for me. I can't. OP cuts him off. You aren't gonna do that with me. You said some dumb shit and that happens. So what? You take your lumps and you learn for next time. I'm not gonna let you use autism as an excuse for you doing dumb crap. If you want to grow, you'll have to learn these things. I said that I'd help you, but if you're going to pout and make excuses, then tch, I'm not going to waste my time. You know where my room is if you come to your senses. Believe this self-pitying bullcrap at the door. Now, some of you might think that was harsh, but I've learned that you can't coddle people. You need to be blunt with them if you ever want them to get the message and actually change their behavior. So, I wait and wonder if perhaps I was too hard on Ed, but then, there's a knock at my door. Ed? Hey, you were right, man. OP? We can work on this together. Plus, don't worry about it too much. Half the people at the event were high anyways, so I doubt any of them will even remember. <laughs> what kind of place is this? <laughs> we then talk some more and play some Fortnite until about midnight. And this is where our story ends for now. Join me next time when I venture into the belly of the beard, if this story gets some interest. And until next time, readers. I mean, the little bit of humble bragging that happened in the story, that's the sort of thing that sticks in my craw pretty quick. But <laughs> OP did manage to win some points back when he told the beard, oh, like, look, your autism is not an excuse. And that is 100% correct. You get diagnosed with disorders and things so you can learn how to combat or correct what's going on within that disorder. You don't just use it as a shield for your crappy behavior, which is exactly what this beard was planning on doing. And OP's like, nope, <laughs> not today. And yeah, I, I mean, it might seem harsh on the surface, but I think OP's just trying to determine if this dude is wasting his time or not. You know, I'll leave the door open. If you're really determined to do this, come on through. And Ed decided that he's really determined because people have to want to change. OP is right that, you know, you need to be blunt with them in order to send the message to them. But at the end of the day, it's them who has to change their behavior. They need to make a conscious decision. And it seems like Ed has made it. I just hope that we don't end up with a La Ogra appearing in part two because then I'll just drop the story completely. I'm like, all right, <laughs> can't do it. I'm done. Oh, but I don't think that's what's going to happen based on what I've heard about this story thus far. His toilet was covered in food stains from the bowl to the seat. <laughs> Why does somebody not know how to flush a toilet after they've had a shit? Hey. me. Disgusting. My Journey to Reform a Neckbeard, Part 2. Hey, if you missed Part 1, the link is in the description, and also should have been at the beginning of the video if I did everything right. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Hi, a random teacher. Your favorite teacher is back to relive this story of self-improvement, cringe, and friendship. Actually, my favorite teacher was from fifth grade. Her name was Miss Yoshino. But, um, yeah, you're a nice random substitute, I guess. <laughs> Today, we'll be diving back into my journey to turn Ed, our neckbeard, from a socially inept, stinky neckbeard into a functioning member of society. 
your goals, I guess. <laughs> you don't want to ride the neat gravy train forever, do you, Ed? I mean, he's not even really neat because he's at college, isn't he? Whatever. I digress. I do have to warn you that this story contains some uh, disgusting descriptions of his neckbeard nest. No pictures, as he asked me specifically not to post them. So, you have been warned. Oh, a description is plenty enough for me. We went into r slash neckbeard nest. I saw photos one time. That was enough. <laughs> a description will do just fine. I don't want to hit my cringe limit for the day too quick, you know. Where last we left off, our dear friend Ed had managed to royally screw up his first real social interaction. And I had screamed at him for trying to use autism as an excuse for his crappy behavior. I mean, is it really crappy behavior if you're unaware what exactly it is you're doing? I, I don't know. I did support OP in that choice in the last post. Maybe I'm a softie. But I do feel the slightest bit bad for Ed, especially considering that he does legitimately want to improve himself. He also managed to finally hygiene for once. But this story gets a little more into his problems with hygiene. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that before. So, I had noticed a couple of weird behaviors from Ed, like him never wanting to let me into his room, and him always talking about women. I mean, like, an over-obsession with girls. Let, let's stick with women, because when you say girls, I think something else when we're talking about neckbeards. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. <laughs> Like every time a woman would walk by, he would completely turn his head and say, Oh, damn, girl, <laughs> what I wouldn't do to that. Which is nothing. You wouldn't do anything to that. <laughs> She's not going to let you. It was literally over the top. Almost like he was trying to act, but I paid it no mind and just kind of chalked it up to him being weird. He is trying to play like a certain role. He sees it work for other people, likely like in the movies. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's how real life works. And no, it 100% is not. I think a lot of people have that problem because of uh, media overconsumption. Not just neck beards, but I guess that's a video rant for another day. <laughs> so about three weeks after the end of our last story, I asked to go to Ed's room to study. Ed says... Eh, uh, nah, man. We could just study here. OP, you know, there's an event here, and my roommate has his girlfriend in the room, so really, your room is the only place that makes sense. Ed, well, uh, maybe we could just study tomorrow. OP, uh, the test is tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, wake up early, cram in the morning. It's gonna be great. Super fun. And Ed just leaves at this point. <laughs> I love that. He's like, okay, definitely a no, but I don't want to say no, so I'm just going <laughs> to evacuate myself from the situation. That is so adorable. <laughs> now, fair warning, it's not uncommon for friends to pop up on each other at random and force some chill time. As I've said before, that sounds like a nightmare. Please, inform me that you're coming so I can tell you please don't come. <laughs> this was just me being a good friend because I thought he could use some cheering up, so it was coming from a place of goodwill. I head over to his building to surprise him, and I catch him just as he's about to leave his room. OP, nah, we're chilling now. I brought some pizza. God damn it, dude. <laughs> I could not. Pizza time. Is it this, like, so overly intrusive? Like, you really have the gall to tell me what I'm going to do with the rest of my day? You see me leaving the room, don't you? Ugh, I, I can't stand it. <laughs> okay, it was coming from a place of goodwill, but a lot of people would not respond kindly to this, myself included. Ed tries to stop OP when he's going to barge into the room, and he says, hey, No, wait, you... Well, I open the door, and what I see next is horrifying. So much so that I'm going to start a new paragraph to describe the scene in front of me. Trash. Everywhere. On. Everything. Old pizza boxes. Greasy fast food bags. 
old chicken tenders, not joking, <laughs> and strange sticky spots covering the floor. <laughs> it's really not that hard to like hang a trash bag in your room. Come on, man. Even at my lowest, we always had a trash bag in the room. I mean, the floor was still covered in lots of little crumbly crap because we didn't have a vacuum, but <laughs> no big trash. That stuff went in the, the dumpster bag. If I can do it, anybody could do it, I swear. Smelly, sweaty clothes were also everywhere. There was a foul odor. A mixture of sweat and shit and rotten food topped off with a liberal amount of Axe body spray. <laughs> As always. It smelled like maybe he had tried to clean the floors with liquid Axe body spray. Literally. The smell was so overpowering. I mean, Axe doesn't smell great, but it smells better than garbage and rotting food. <laughs> At least by a little bit. The desk was crammed with books and paper and hentai manga. Not anything alarming, no lolly or anything. Thank God for that. Because like I said, that is what I think of when a neckbeard mentions girls. <laughs> but yeah, it was still hentai on the counter and a bottle of lotion on the desk. No tissues? He just got a, a dirty coom sock laying under the desk or something? <laughs> And of course, we can't forget the garbage bags. They were just lined up at the door. Hey, I, that's something, isn't it? They were filled with crap that this dude was too lazy to take to the dumpster. This, combined with the smell, made me absolutely sick. I thought I was going to throw up. I run into the bathroom, and again, Ed tries to stop me, saying, Wait, don't! I should have listened. <laughs> His toilet was covered in shit stains from the bowl to the seat. <laughs> Why does somebody not know how to flush a toilet after they've had a shit? What do you mean? Disgusting! <sighs> I can't breathe, bro. The seat? You pooped on the seat and you didn't take like a little thing of toilet paper and just try to make it nice. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Oh. A smell of piss <laughs> hit me like a ton of bricks. You know, it's just spattered all around the base of the toilet. Ugh. I usually think of beard kitchens as the worst thing, but yeah, <laughs> the bathroom offers some heavy competition. And then we get to the shower. The curtain was covered in mold. The bottom of the shower was also black with mold and smelled of concentrated piss. <laughs> Uh, bro, you're supposed to wash it down when you pee in the shower. What's going on here? But the absolute worst thing here was a dildo att <laughs> attached to the wall of the shower with strange brown spots covering it. Oh, no! I mean, he wasn't expecting company. You are in his private space. He can do as he pleases, but <laughs> goddamn, you're not going to rinse it off or something? <laughs> Oh, God! Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the... <laughs> You're gonna take that thing covered in festering poop and put it back inside yourself. <laughs> uh, please don't ever in life. Oh, I ignored it, but kind of had a suspicion about him. I just stared at him and said nothing. He looked back at me and said, uh, this is why I didn't want you to come. OP, dude, how can you live like this? Ed starting to cry. Uh, I don't know. Aw, oh, man, now I feel for the beard, but at least he seems like a relatively innocent beard. There are times when it's just really hard to overcome depression or, you know, some sort of mental disorder and things like this do happen. And while Ed is... Smart enough to be ashamed about it, I don't think that he has the mental fortitude to go forward with fixing it, which is where OP comes in, and thankfully Ed agrees, presumably. So OP says, well, let's stop living like this and do something about it. Ed, uh, but where do I start? OP, I'll help you as much as I can. 
Oh, a beautiful bromance blossoming, let me tell you that much. Hopefully Ed is able to keep the room as clean as OP left it, because a lot of beard tales I hear, like somebody cleans up all this crap and then a month later it's back to exactly the same state. So hopefully that's not the case here. As we saw in the first part, Ed does want to change, so I guess we'll just see how it goes. So we locked the room and headed to the closest Walmart. Ed spent about $70 on cleaning supplies, a new shower curtain, and some laundry soap. While we're out, I take him to the Bath and Body Works to get some good body wash, cologne, and some real body spray. What you like, coconut sunshine? Oh, you mean a man's body spray? Do they make body spray for men? What? <laughs> I'm just razzing you. It's not a thing that I would consider buying for myself, but hey, maybe I should because, you know, wifey hits me with a spritz of French vanilla before we walk out the door. She's trying to tell me something. <laughs> she just doesn't want to say it with her mouth, maybe. Now I'm thinking deep. After this video, I got to take a step back and reassess my whole life. <laughs> On this day, he threw out all of his axe. Oh, which was probably a lot considering how the place smelled. But yeah, that's not the kind of thing you can sell secondhand, I suppose. <laughs> when we get back, it takes at least five hours to clean the room in its entirety. We scrubbed every inch of that place, top to bottom. We replaced the shower curtains and washed all of his clothes. He obviously didn't know the ins and outs of serious cleaning, but my mom taught me well, and I taught Ed all that I knew. I really feel for Ed in this moment, man. Guys get like put out of the house and people are just like, figure it out. You're a man, you don't need to know how to clean unless you're living by yourself and then your whole house is a mess and people are like, hey, why is your house such a mess? <laughs> it's like, I don't really know where to start. In the Navy, it was easy enough to keep stuff clean because I could pay people to come and clean my room. But once I moved out to civilian life, it was really, really difficult because money was tight and I had no idea how to do anything, basically. So yes, my house was equally as disgusting. I, I feel like I know where Ed is coming from in a big way, is what I'm trying to say. You should come over and teach me some things, user a random teacher. <laughs> That's what you could be the teacher of. God knows my wife would appreciate that. We had to throw out at least 10 bags worth of crap from his room, including his old sheets. Yes, purge the pickled sheets. <laughs> but at the end of it, he had a clean room that looked good and smelled good and made him feel good. He turned to me with tears in his eyes and thanked me. Ed, thank you so much, man. I don't know what I would have done without you. OP, so how do you feel? Ed, better than ever. He gives me a giant hug and buys us dinner for the night. Aw, he is a good guy. This is a wholesome story. I love it. When I leave, I feel good about him. Sadly, I had to cancel an uh, appointment with this woman that I'd been talking to. But helping my friend was so worth it. Appointment? What are you, like a gigolo or something? You can call it a date. <laughs> That's okay. Then another week passes and refund season hits. Now, since Ed had a lot of scholarships from him not only being smart as hell, but also an amazing coder, his school was not only paid for, but he also had plenty of money left over that he got back as a refund. At least like 5,000 bucks a semester. Yeah, Ed's living it big, right? <laughs> so I see him walk in with one of the hottest girls on campus, and I think to myself, Mmm, something ain't right here. Oh, come on, OP. He, he can pull that, right? <laughs> not yet. I mean, I'm not throwing any shade on the dude because I knew that he was a good guy, but this girl had a reputation around campus. Oh, hottest girl, also gold digger. Probably lead with the gold digger line. <laughs> So when he sees me, he's all excited to introduce me to his new girlfriend. We shall call her Shay. Ed. Hey, bro. This is Shay. She's my girlfriend. OP. Dude, seriously? That's pretty nice. Hope you two are happy. Shay with a big fake smile. Yeah, he's definitely something. <laughs> 
I knew at this point exactly what was happening, but eh, I left it alone due to me not wanting to upset him. Plus, he wouldn't have believed me. So as the next two weeks go by, he drops the sum total of $1,500 on this girl. I hope you're at least getting some, Ed. You know he's not, though, and that's the saddest part of all. <laughs> Between dates and food and clothes and gas and an expensive new laptop, the amount of money that he burned made me upset. So I finally sat him down to try and talk to him, but he obviously doesn't believe what I say, and he retorts, uh, This is what men do for women. And if I didn't support him and his new relationship, uh, then we couldn't be friends. And he added that, Shay told him that I might try to break them up because I wanted her. Yeah, maybe, whatever. I mean, might be a nice little ride, but too rich for my blood. <laughs> so I just gave him a little piece of advice. I tell him, next time they're about to hang out, ask if they can do something that doesn't cost any money. And he just stormed off. That is primo advice right there, OP. If you don't want to just come to the park with me and eat a bag of chips while we people watch, then it's never going to work, honestly. Try to get me to drop three stacks on dinner, ain't even going back to my room afterwards, bruh. <laughs> I am not the one. And predictably, next week, Ed comes back up to me looking pitiful. Ed says, eh, We broke up, man. OP, I told you this would happen. Women like that are only after one thing, and you currently have plenty of it. You just need to be smart. Is it completely fair to paint her with that brush? I don't know. <laughs> the only information we've been given on her as a person makes me kind of despise her a little, but part of me has to respect how she played the game, you know? Ed got finessed. <laughs> finessed real hard. Ugh. Ed... Yeah, but I need to tell you something. OP, what is it? Ed, well, I think I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> then why are you front like this? Oh, God, a neck beard with a beard. Which, if you didn't know, a beard is like a woman that hangs out with a gay guy so he looks straight. That is a top-tier form of irony or something like that. <laughs> OP says, yeah, I kind of figured that you were from the dildo that was mounted up in your shower. <laughs> but if you were gay, why did you let her take advantage of you if you didn't even like her? Ed, well, as long as it wasn't with a guy, then I'm not being gay, so it's not a sin. Oh, Ed, they poisoned you, my brother. <laughs> OP says, now, I'm a Christian, but I don't think gay people are going to rot in hell. I mean, neither do I, dude. I think if you're doing good things, respecting other people, and living your life to the fullest, then, I mean, what else can really be asked of somebody, you know? And OP tells Ed, yeah, people don't go to hell for being gay. <laughs> also, why did you wait so long to tell me, Ed? Because no one would want to be friends with a gay guy. But he didn't say gay guy. He used uh, a bad word. OP, who told you that? Ed, my parents. OP, well, I'm friends with you, aren't I? So, what's the big issue? Ed, <sighs> my, I still spent so much money on Shay. Uh, I feel like such a dumbass for that. <laughs> Good topic shift. He's like, oh, I'm not going to win this argument. Let's focus on something else. Sure. Why not? I do find it sad that Ed's parents kind of poisoned his mind, but I'm sure he'll get that flipped around, learn to be himself and love himself. But anyways, yep, that's where this story ends for now. But there's one major detail that you might not like. Also, it might sound a little fake, so take this next part with a grain of salt. Shay was roommates with a friend of mine who was extremely pissed when she found out what Shay had been doing. So we devised a plan where her new laptop, which she barely used anyways, would come up missing. She found out what happened and tried to report her roommate for stealing the laptop, but since Ed still had the receipt, 
we were able to say that the laptop was his and that he was letting her use it. She hadn't returned it, and we had her roommate get it back for Ed. The campus police sided with us and even got her to sign her account out of the laptop. Ed then factory reset the laptop and kept it for himself. <laughs> he at least managed to get back a good chunk of the value that he burned on her. Yeah, I'm aware that this is illegal, but seeing as she took advantage of an autistic neckbeard in reform, I don't really care. <laughs> Now this is where our story comes to an end for now. Join me next time when we address his diet and exercise. Until next time, readers. Now that last bit definitely is more than a little bit convoluted, but I am glad overall that Ed was able to retrieve the laptop. <laughs> it definitely was illegal. I don't think that the courts would take his uh, disability into account. And I also find it kind of ironic that, yeah, the disability can be used as an excuse when he buys a chicken expensive laptop, but not for talking about animated pornography. <laughs> uh, what's the difference between these two occasions? I guess it's that OP is placing the label on Ed instead of him placing it upon himself. Overall, Ed getting finessed by this gold digger is... Not really the part that I want to focus on. The cleaning of the room. Absolute bro move. 100%. Probably something that I would not have thrown myself into voluntarily. And OP is definitely a good person for trying to rescue this neckbeard. Regardless of why he started on this quest. Is it a quest of pity? Is it a quest of reconciliation? Are you trying to make something up to him? Like... <laughs> I, in my brain, there just always has to be an ulterior motive. I'm always looking for it. To just do this out of the goodness of your heart seems the slightest bit sus to me, but I guess I'm ever the cynic, so let's go on. We'll, we'll jump into part number three today, and we'll see how it goes, and maybe we could get just a little more insight. So let's do it. My Journey to Reform a Neckbeard, part three, Diet and bearder size, <laughs> which is uh, no exercise at all. Bearder size is lifting cans of Mountain Dew to your mouth and lifting the tendies to the dipping sauce. <laughs> that about covers it. Anyways, oh man, there's no way I got messages and 50 plus upvotes and a reward on my last post. Yeah, it kind of took fire. People are really shoving this one. So far, seems to be a wholesome beard story done right. I had no idea that you guys liked these stories that much, and as such, I must continue to deliver. Oh, bless you, OP. <laughs> I'm sorry for being gone so long, as being a teacher does keep me quite busy. We still haven't established what you teach. Can we get that information somewhere, somehow? <laughs> that is quite curious indeed. Maybe he addresses it in the comments. I don't really read the comments, because I want to give, like, my actual thoughts. Anywho... I have now returned, and I will deliver you the most effective methods of getting a neckbeard to exercise. And again, maybe I could use these for myself. Let me get my, <laughs> my notepad out. Try and force myself back into the gym. Oy. So, about three weeks after the events involving Shay, I had begun to help Ed with his diet. The first major part was addressing his liquid intake. I am not shitting you at all when I tell you that I believe... All this man drank was pop. Yeah, don't do that. Your kidneys are going to fail before you're 30. Then again, all I really drink is coffee. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I sneak some water in there every once in a while. I am talking about bags of two liters when we clean this dude's room. And walking around with a two liter of either Mountain Dew or Pepsi or Orange Crush daily. I honestly thought about calling him Kel for a second because of all the orange soda he drank. If you know, you know. Oh, <laughs> Key to the Kel reference, bruh. Who loves orange soda? Ed loves orange soda. <laughs> uh, oh God, I guess I do know. I'm old. He had a lot of joint pain and terrible acne from all the excess sugar and the other crap that they throw into pop, so Obviously, this was the first major step in changing his diet, as eating better does make you feel better. Legitimately, it does. I'm hooked on salads, bro. <laughs> you better throw some chicken breast in there. I need some meat. Give me an antipasto salad. 
that's what makes me feel the very best. <laughs> but yeah, I like green things. It make me feel good. The first thing I did was get him on a strict diet of only water for a week. Now, this was not easy to accomplish, but with me staying on his case and letting him stay with me for the whole week, we got him to only drink water for one entire week. At the end of the week, he started feeling better, going to the bathroom was easier, his joint pain cleared up, and so had his acne. But liquids were only part of the diet. It was time to get to the food. I mean, I don't know if I could flip reverse my whole routine and everything like this. Even just cutting out the sodas, those empty calories that don't even fill you up, can go a long way. I don't even know if we need to address the food at this point. But it seems like OP is going to go the full nine. So, I'm not kidding you when I say that this man would eat 69.42% fast food. 83.87% of statistics are made up on the spot. <laughs> Obviously, I made that number up. Oh, he totally acknowledged it. <laughs> but needless to say, this dude ate a lot of fast food. But the worst part was that it was mostly Arby's. Yeah, because their Twitter is posting anime and stuff like that. <laughs> they know their branding, okay? Like at least four times a week, he would eat at Arby's. This was shocking. Not because of the amount of fast food that he ate, but because to this day, I have never met anyone else who actually eats Arby's regularly and enjoys it. Yeah, Arby's is like one of those road trip things. I'm hungry now. I guess we'll pull off here. There's only an Arby's. Oh, well. This shit look nasty as fuck. Arby's, we have the beat. <laughs> I think I've been to Arby's like twice. After thoroughly roasting him for eating Arby's, I asked him a few questions as to his large amount of fast food intake, and he revealed to me that he didn't know how to cook. Yeah, again, it's that thing that I addressed last episode. You're a man, you don't need to learn how to cook, and then you go out in the world and all you're eating is pre-prepared crap, freezer-ready meals, and people are like, why do you only eat garbage? Bruh, because I don't know how to cook. <laughs> It really is a sorry state of affairs. I don't blame this neckbeard at all. I blame society. That's right. I'm, I'm taking it there. <laughs> now, it's normal for guys in their early 20s to not know how to cook, but this was unacceptable. I took it upon myself to teach this man all the ins and outs of cooking. By the time I was done, I was going to turn him into a black Gordon Ramsay. He's black? I guess I didn't expect that. <laughs> I usually imagine neckbeards as white dudes. But okay. Did that hit anybody else by surprise? Comment section? Please let me know. <laughs> so I took him through a month-long cooking boot camp where every waking moment was filled with heat and stress until he ate, slept, and breathed cooking. Well, that can't be good for your lungs. <laughs> or I just gave him my old foreman and showed him how to grill some chicken tenders instead of frying them, and managed to get his veggie intake to a semi-reasonable level. Still wasn't great, but it's progress. Now we get to the exercise part. That's right, we got a black Gordon Ramsay over here. He cooks everything on his George Foreman grill. <laughs> oh, that's all the ins and outs of cooking, guys. That's all you need to know. Go buy a George Foreman. <laughs> Great tasting, healthier food in minutes. Uh, not a sponsor, yet. <laughs> God damn, dude. They couldn't have taken more than a day. Here, plug it in, throw some chicken on it. It's good. <laughs> okay, but yeah, the exercise. Now, I don't need to be the one to tell you that getting some extremely overweight dude to run and exercise is extremely difficult, so... I decided to focus on just increased activity rather than actual workouts. Yeah, that's how it starts. Then you get those endorphins flowing and you're like, oh, what if we actually like did a jog instead of a walk today? The hardest part is just getting the ball rolling. I guess both literally and figuratively. <laughs> I wanted to show him that physical activity could be fun. So naturally, the first place that I went was Pokemon Go. 
Oh, legit, dude. I'm sure I've talked about this before, but like when the game first came out, the first few months that it was out and people were nuts for it, I used to take people's phones and go hatch their eggs for them. And they would pay me to do it. After work, I was getting exercise, making buku bucks. I could have quit my job at that point, honestly, but I knew that the Pokemon Go craze was not going to be forever. <laughs> so I didn't. But yeah, well, the, the fire in my belly lasted. Honestly, I was probably in the best shape of my life at that point. So Ed and OP would walk around campus for hours catching Pokemon together. And honestly, it was pretty enjoyable for the both of us. Yeah, stay off those lures. You gotta go walk around. <laughs> but I still needed to take this a step further as we were going to need some intense activity to seriously start getting Ed to lose some actual weight. But there was just no energy that came with him to get him to lift weights with me. But one night, he asked me to go to a nightclub with him. Oh yeah, big boy can move when he wants to move, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Dancing is a really good way to do it too. You don't even have to take amphetamines, but it helps. Hey, don't do drugs. <laughs> so yes, it was at this club that Ed discovered his love of dubstep or techno music, whichever one you prefer. Ugh, I prefer neither. Give me some EDM, bro. <laughs> it's like that inner hipster coming out. Sorry. So <laughs> I got the idea to incorporate this into some workouts and oh boy, did it work. We would hit the gym three times a week for at least an hour a day and go hard, powered by the force of grimy dubstep to give us limitless energy. This, along with the changes in his diet, worked wonders. So let's fast forward to around the end of 2017. Oh yeah, you were really in on that Pokemon Go craze. Wasn't that like 2016, something like that? Dude was really putting in work, and he had made some significant progress. For about a month and a half worth of work, he managed to lose 35 pounds. When I showed him his before and after pictures, he started tearing up, and again gave me a giant hug. He honestly had made some shocking progress, and the determination that I saw in his eyes to keep going let me know that not only was I doing the right thing, but I was also likely making a friend for life. And this is where our story ends. Sorry for such a long break. As I said before, teaching keeps me busy, but hopefully I can get the next part up before too long. I appreciate all the messages and comments. My story being read to perfection by Moonhorse. Aw, oh, beautiful Moonhorse. And the award that I received on the previous post. Honestly, it brings me joy that so many people are willing to listen to a sappy feel-good story instead of just reading about people making fools of themselves and having a laugh about it, so thanks to all of you for reading. Finally, if you're interested, I can share some of my tale from working at a GameStop after I'm finished with Ed, but just let me know. Until next time, readers. So to me, it would be a great scientific advancement if we could just kick our feet up and be like, oh, that's it. Uh, hard dubstep is the solution to beardery, but the truth is that Ed did all of this with what he had inside. He had a need to change. He knew that what he was doing with his life wasn't the right thing. Luckily, OP stepped in for whatever reason to try and guide him, show him the way, and for as much as I do like to hassle him, you know, give him a little of the old razzle-dazzle, <laughs> I do think that he is a good dude overall. I would go so far as to say it even seems to me like part three is where you could close the book and just be like, yeah, Ed lives a good life now, the end, but obviously there is something more that we have yet to uncover. And then Grandma slaps the hell out of Jabba. For a 60-something-year-old woman, she had powerful hands. <laughs> Here we go at old school. My Journey to Reform a Neckbeard, Part 4, Family Ties. Oh, people was talking in the comments, I was like, this basically wraps the Ed arc. You could just be like, he lived a happy life, the end. But no, he's got his parents poisoning his mind, as was pointed out to me. And uh, yeah, he, he's got some familial problems to deal with. So I'm looking forward to diving into that, because I always love seeing how a neckbeard is born. The psychology of how they're made. Anywho, 
Been gone longer than expected. Sorry, everyone. Oh, don't worry about it, user or random teacher. I like to wait till the saga's up so I could space them out at my own speed. <laughs> Classes are in the full swing and students keep me crazy busy, but here I am and here it goes. Today, we'll be diving into the biggest part of addressing Ed's issues, his family. This is full of ups and downs, so please bear with me. Let's go. Well, we're used to that around here. I'd prefer more ups than downs, but sometimes it just can't be that way. We take what we get. <laughs> so this begins in the summer of 2019. Quite a time jump. Since Ed and I were from the same hometown, we spent a lot of time together. Ed had not seen his parents in almost a year, and let me remind you that they were not okay with his being gay in the slightest. Huh. I'm trying to think of another reason that they might be against gay people, but <laughs> really it's generally just uh, evangelicals. I don't think I've seen a legitimate, like, root cause of homophobia outside of that one, <laughs> specifically. So, uh, if you know of some, do let me know. I love to be corrected. But me, knowing that you eventually have to face your fears, I knew that he would eventually have to see his parents face to face. Yeah, just give them the talk. If they don't like it, okay, cut them out. Let me know when you change your mind. <laughs> It is difficult, but it's not like a life-ending decision. At that point, it is the parents burning the bridge, not you. So, don't sweat it. But yeah, because it's better to just rip the bandage off, we drove to his old house to confront his family. Which seems like it happened really quick, but <laughs> there's like two years between that the last story and this one. So, I'm sure he was working up the nerve during that time. When we finally pull up, his house is small and dingy and falling apart. One of those houses that you would think is abandoned, but are shocked to find out that there are people that actually live there. That is such a sad situation. Just imagine poor little Ed growing up in this house, man. You want to know why he lived in garbage during his college days? Uh, because he grew up in garbage. Ugh. This was an extremely telling sign that his home life might have been a factor in his beardy behavior. Yes, the research confirms that. When we enter the den, the front of his house looks like his room before we basically threw the entire room away. Trash and boxes and cat shit and pee and anything else that you can imagine. A smell three times worse than Ed's room and cats running around everywhere. Yeah, be glad Ed didn't have cats. Untrained cats <laughs> gotta mess the house up quicker than anything else. This family had like 20 cats, and I am not kidding you, literally around 20 cats. Then we hear a voice shout, Is that you? <laughs> and out from the corner comes Ed's father, the beard patriarch himself. Yes. Uh, sort of pleased to meet you, kind of, I guess. <laughs> His dad was a semi-normal looking man. Your typical middle-aged American. Slightly overweight, but not a bad looking guy. He also liked nerdy things and would geek out and play magic with his son, as I learned later. And then we hear a shrill voice shout, James, is that Ed? James says back, yeah, he came home for a visit after a year. Then from around the corner waddles an extremely overweight woman in her early 40s. We shall call her Jabba because, well, you can probably already guess why. <laughs> Not the most clever name, but I'll allow it, Jabba. Hello, son! It's been a while! How are you? Ed, not looking her in the eye. Yeah, I'm fine, Ma. James? Son, you look amazing. How did you lose so much weight? Ed? Uh, this is my friend Teach. He's been helping me through college. Uh, honestly, he's the reason that I am the person that I am today. Jabba? So, he's the one who made you gay. Only, he didn't say gay. He used a very specific F word, which we're not going to repeat on the channel. 
And I guess it is good that the cat is already out of the bag, so to speak. <laughs> like, okay, we're over the, the biggest hump so far. They let you back into their home even with this knowledge. Maybe we're making progress, I hope. <laughs> OP tries to retort. What the? Ed cuts me off and pushes me back. Bob, we already went over this. You can't become gay. You either are or you aren't, Jabba. Bullshit! I told you to straighten yourself out so you don't burn in hell. But if you insist on living this sinful life, then I... Ed. Hey, so why don't we just calm down and get something to eat? I'm sure you're both starving after being out all day, Jabba. Eh, I guess I could eat. Uh, honey, make the chicken tenders. Not shitting you, that is actually what she said. <laughs> At least she didn't call him tendies with honey mussy. <laughs> so that encounter ends, and Ed just looks at me and says, Don't say anything too bad. You'll just make her angry. But of course, I had an extremely hard time staying silent while this literal land whale insulted my friend and told him that he was going to hell for being gay. It's interesting, it doesn't seem to be attached to any like extreme religious beliefs because Ed's dad plays magic, which is of course, you know, a game invented by the devil. <laughs> Not Wizards of the Coast, the actual devil. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it just seems like legitimately they do not like gay people for seemingly no reason. Maybe it's like one of those genetic arguments. People are like, oh, you need to pass on your genes, etc., etc. Try and make it like a science-based argument instead of a religious-based one. But honestly, like, pass on your genes? Who cares, bro? What are you, Henry VIII? <laughs> It doesn't matter. If you want to reproduce, go ahead. But if you don't, okay. We got plenty of people on the planet anyways. Are your genes so amazing that you require your son to pass them down? Are you perhaps uh, a lord of some sort? <laughs> you have a kingdom that you're passing down through the generations? <laughs> so ridiculous. I'm still really confused about it, man. Uh, maybe we'll find out some more. So, throughout the next hour, there was something interesting that I noticed. Ed and his father caught up and played some magic together. There were no insults, no slurs, not even so much as a wince being thrown at him when Ed told him about his love life. It was just a father and a son spending some quality time together, playing some cards and catching up. But then, Jabba calls James into the kitchen and starts screaming at him about letting the tenders burn and wasting time playing stupid games with that gay son of his. He then struggled to apologize before she threw the pan at him and hit him on the head. It was at this moment when it all clicked. Ed's parents together were not the issue. It was only his mother. I'm telling you right now, James, you need to stand up for your boy. <laughs> but like, look, you don't talk about him that way. And she'd either respect you for it or, or throw another pan at you. <laughs> at least she can only hit you once with the pan. If she has a solid metal Sailor Moon pencil case, <laughs> she can hit you five, six times before you even know what's up. <laughs> so a pan's not that bad. That's an unfortunate nookie reference for the uninitiated. Uh, his mother was a shrill, sad woman whose only goal was to fill everyone's life with misery and sorrow before God finally decided to grace us and remove her from this earth. Yeah, I don't think that was God taking her back. <laughs> okay, into the eternal pit of fire you go. Somebody else was taking her back. She hated everything and had somehow manipulated James into giving up his dreams to take care of her. What was his dreams? I don't understand. Does he just want to chill out and play magic? That's a relatively easy dream to accomplish. 
But yeah, just because you're a man doesn't mean you have to eat endless shit sandwiches from your wife. Every once in a while, you gotta let her know how it is. Otherwise, the power dynamic is just completely out of whack. It's supposed to be a two-way street, you see? This dude is just getting pushed around and abused. Hit with a pan? That's definitely abuse. Like, 100%. And it is so not okay. How she managed to get James to give up his dream is really beyond me. To this day, it shocks me how this physically and verbally abusive land whale managed to manipulate anyone into staying with her. My hatred for this woman really could go on for pages, and it would still not be enough to sate the rage in my heart that I still feel at this woman, so I will stop it here. No, you can go on, that's okay. <laughs> I like detail. You gotta grab a hold of that impotent rage. Let it fuel you to something greater. Of course, if the rage is just gonna make you crumble, then yeah, you don't have to step into it. But I am always eager to hear if you want to tell. <laughs> so after another couple of hours, some fast food arrives, and we all sit at the couch and start eating. All y'all gave up on the chicken tendies? <laughs> They got burned because he was playing magic. And then they got thrown across the kitchen because the wife has uh, some anger management issues, I guess. Ed finally graduated from neckbeard reform school and took charge of his own life and confronted his mother about everything. It started with his sexuality and it morphed into multiple different things like the way that she treats people, the condition of the house, and the real dagger... How a woman who regularly cheats on her husband has the nerve to tell anyone what is a sin. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> who, who's bagging the land whale? What's going on there? And a married land whale at that? <laughs> Swear to God, dude. Some dudes are just such dogs. <laughs> Have you no shame at all? <laughs> Uh, the fallout was, of course, going to be spectacular. Oh, that's what we tune in for, isn't it? <laughs> I want some fireworks. So, hearing all this naturally made her upset, and she began throwing all types of insults at Ed, including that lovely F word for gay people, which uh, gets used in this story quite a lot, but I guess because the mom used it quite a lot. She even began throwing things at him and James, and when James tried to calm her down, she shouted at him, Shut up! You're just as gay as him getting raped by your uncle! What kind of man are you? Jesus Christ, dude. To open up about something that definitely makes you feel so vulnerable to a woman that at the time you probably presumed loved you, and then to have that thrown back in your face. Ah. Uh, I just don't have the words. This woman is vile, the foulest creature. Is she dead? Did heart disease relieve us of her yet? <laughs> because if not, uh, that's what I'm hoping for. Maybe something even more painful than that. A woman this evil deserves to suffer. James just started crying, and at this point, I had seen enough. OP, what the actual hell is wrong with you? Jabba, who the hell are you? One of his gay friends. OP, you say one more word, and I swear I will shove my foot inside of your ass. Jabba, how dare you talk to me that way? James, get him out. James just stays at the table, as he should. He wants some backup, goddammit. <laughs> Jabba, useless fucking man. She then starts throwing things at me until I then decide to leave. Ed also follows me out of the house to the sounds of Jabba shouting, Don't come back until you've changed your sinful ways, you dirty gay lord. <laughs> but she didn't say gay lord. <laughs> this is such a scene to behold. I cannot imagine being a part of something like this. But I will say that Ed and OP definitely have, like, a, a stronger bond. It's called trauma bonding, okay? That is just, like, so absolutely wild. I want some vengeance. I want to see this woman taken down a peg or ten. 
<sighs> and at all this, Ed finally breaks down. So then I take him to my grandmother's house to get some rest. When we finally get there, my grandmother has a little talk with Ed, and it turns out that she knows his grandmother and is honestly friendly with her. I think they went to the same church or something. Oh, there's the religion. I knew it was somewhere in there. Talk about sin and all this stuff. So good. Okay, my theory holds up. <laughs> so she called her over to talk to Ed. The conversation when she got there was something that I always love to remember. This specific part will always stick out to me. So imagine this being said in the loving old school black grandma voice. I'm just going to do an old people voice. I'm not going to get all racial with the black grandma bit. <laughs> Child, if God wanted you to be straight, he would have made you straight. God don't make no mistakes, and he sure as hell don't send no one to hell just for sucking a little bit of dick. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Ah, you killing me! Merry Christmas, everybody! <laughs> Good night. <laughs> as long as you live your life for him, then you always have a path into heaven. Oh, and don't worry about your nasty old mama. I'll talk some sense into her. And this finally gave Ed the one thing he was lacking that I could not provide. A family support system. Bless Grandma, man. Why are the grandmas always the best in these stories? Ah, I just love Grandma. <laughs> Every time, including my own Grandma. Just the best examples of humanity. So, about another month passes, and Ed asked me to go talk to his dad with him. When we get to his house, his mom is gone for the day, thank God, and his dad wants to get some cleaning done. Is the mom the breadwinner? Is that why she's like, you know, overbearing and wearing the pants in the house? I don't understand what's going on 100%. I have so many follow-up questions. <laughs> but okay, dad's cleaning house. We start talking about the situation with Jabba, and he just breaks down and tells us everything. How she convinced him to give up his dream and take care of her. How she spends his money that he got from his father's life insurance. And how he didn't have the courage to leave because she's the best I could do. You, you really believe that though? <laughs> Come on. That is a lie that she pounded into your head. Don't buy into that one. The only way that is the truth is if you flip reverse it. Because he is the best that she could do. That <laughs> seems factual to me. So needless to say, OP is steaming at this point. I honestly couldn't believe that this woman managed to destroy this man, mentally and physically. It took literally slapping him in the face and shaking him to make him realize the truth. But after about three weeks, he finally mustered up the courage to leave this she-devil. Slapping him in the face and shaking him that's a simple solution. <laughs> like a woman in the 50s. Get a hold of yourself, dame. <laughs> Man. Get a hold of yourself. Stewardess, please let me handle this. Uh, I'm gonna get out. Uh, no, I think talking it out is a much more healthy way to handle it than hitting, isn't it? But okay, if it works, it works. And of course, when he was moving out, Jabba obviously protested, yelling, Why are you leaving me? Duh, bitch. <laughs> and it was all my fault for manipulating her husband into leaving her. I know the irony. <laughs> but as much as she tried to protest, I managed to body block. Oh look, you're making bros with Ed's dad too. OP, he's not a bad guy. He's in it for the full nine. I remain cynical and want to know the underlying reason why. But overall, it is pretty nice. I bet OP is going to graduate from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! to Magic. And they're all going to be uh, Magic the Gathering champions or something like that. Is that how the story ends? Probably not. <laughs> of course, there were a few blows thrown at me. And she even spit on me. But as a good friend does, I bared it to give my friend and his father a clean escape. Eventually, he manages to pack up all his crap and leaves her in that pit of a house to die by her lonesome with all those accursed cats. 
But as they left, they took with them a single kitten, the runt of a litter, a small black and white kitten that had to fight to survive. This cat took an instant liking to James, so he made sure that it got to stay in the only clean part of the house, and as such, basically became his best friend. So it's no wonder that he decided that this particular cat would be his and his son's cat when they finally decided to leave. He named it Bolt because it was full of energy, loved to jump and climb all over everything, and Bolt to this day is still a happy cat who is indeed full of energy. It's always nice when you save a small animal's life. They'll always pay you back 100%. The dog that we have, Brownie is her name because she's brown. <laughs> she was the runt of the litter too and uh actually her mom and all of her brothers and sisters ended up dying but because we dewormed her and made sure she ate well she developed into a, a happy healthy dog she is my first dog officially she is the coolest dog just a, a good loyal hound i'm sure the cat is loyal too in its own way <laughs> but now this leaves us with yet another problem Ed and his father had nowhere to go, so they turned to the one place in town that they knew, the house of Jabba's parents. Uh-oh, is that the grandma? I guess it is, but I don't know if I would go there, man. I think you're, like, still in the circle. Ugh, <laughs> I don't like that not too much. They were obviously open to Ed and James living with them, as they both loved Ed and thought that someone in their family would finally leave this small town and make something of himself. So they moved in with him until James managed to save up enough money for an apartment. There you go, get out of there ASAP. <laughs> Naturally, Jabba was pissed that her parents didn't take her side, saying, How could you side with that bitch of a husband and that gay son of his? Don't they have any Christian value left? <laughs> <sighs> oh, that irony. Mm, so thick, delicious, <laughs> creamy. Oh, Jesus. And then Grandma slaps the hell out of Jabba. For a 60-something-year-old woman, she had powerful hands. <laughs> Here we go at old school. She then said something along the lines of, how could you be that much of a hypocrite? And she has no room to talk about being a good Christian after sucking every pecker in this city. <laughs> oh, Grandma's too real, bro. <laughs> Jesus. It's like I raised you, but I gotta call it like I see it. Holy hell, I love it. <laughs> Jabba then stormed out of the house threw a rock through her parents' window, and got on the bus <laughs> to head home because she couldn't drive. Wow, she can't drive? I'm surprised. She seems like such a productive member of society. <laughs> a rock through the window, and then she escaped from the cops by bus. <laughs> You're killing me. Uh... Oh, that's beautiful. So, <laughs> this is where this part of the story comes to an end. Sorry for taking another three weeks for me to get this part out, but state testing, along with other obligations, keeps me extremely busy. Also, sorry if this gets hard to read or sounds a little fake, as I tried to cram as much information into this part as I could in order to get through everything without this story getting too long to read. I'm looking forward to the next video, Moon Horse. I guess I gotta go watch Moon Horse's take on all this stuff. It's always nice to hear a different perspective, you know? Anyways, next time, we will address how I got both of them back into the dating world and got a bit of cosmic justice for Ed. Hopefully the next part will be out before too long, but that's all for me. Until next time, readers. Hot damn, and a merry story makes for a merry, merry Christmas. <laughs> I appreciate you guys taking your time out of the holidays. Or if you're not watching this all the holiday, that's cool too. I mean, you're here and that's what's most importantly. It's pretty amazing to me that OP was able to save two different people now. Granted, they're, they're blood relation. They're basically the same people. 50% of this genetic material is shared. But <laughs> 
to have them both like in your debt essentially it's a really cool thing and op hasn't even asked him for money yet be like hey bro <laughs> remember that time I, I convinced you to get out of your wife house? let me borrow 50 bucks <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I always have this like cynicism inside me, but it seems like the grandma of the story has the same cynicism. And, uh, I really, she's my favorite character. <laughs> she just rocketed to the top of the list. I mean, I don't like, uh, the, you know, corporal punishment on her kids, but at this point her, her daughter is a grown ass woman who probably does need to get the crap slapped out of her a time or two. Of course, that sort of treatment when she was younger might be the reason that she resorts to that as a grown adult. I don't know. It gets passed down in a bad way. Hopefully, Ed is going to be the one to break the cycle. Religion being a tool of persecution also puts a pretty sour taste in my mouth, but I guess that's been going on for <laughs> a lot longer than just this story. Still doesn't change my view on it. Oh, I, I am so glad. I hope at the end in the epilogue, they'll be like, yeah, she died. And I'll say, good. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, there's other beards that I want to die more. But uh, this is a good candidate. You know, top 10 at the very least. <laughs> I understand the female mind. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to do the Vulcan V meld. My journey to reform a neck beard, part four and a half. <laughs> a beard's guide to uh, ladies or uh, gentlemen, in this case, I guess. Mavadies and gentle thems. Yes, we see that before. <laughs> As some of us might recall, Ed is like totally gay or something, and his mom was trying to repress him. His dad seems pretty like cool about it, I guess. But yeah, now that he's got these newfound freedoms, will he find uh, a, a gentleman love to call his own, is the question. It truly has been a while since we last met, readers. Oh, preach, a random teacher. <laughs> you write about that. Sorry, I let it drop for a second. School picked up so rapidly that I seem to have forgotten this story was in my drafts and about ready to be posted. You know, I think we're one and the same. <laughs> we are kindred spirits, you and I. My little reminder was a new take on my story, read by the amazing, incomparable Red X. Don't build it up too much, though. <laughs> and his disgusting, toe-curling, spine-shattering, neckbeard voice that I love so much, at the following link. Hey, included the link and everything? God, I love that. <laughs> but now I return to bring you this story. Remember my warning from parts four and five, and let us get into this tale. Well, the warning was uh, basically what I got on the disclaimers there. You know, standard neckbeard fare. Uh, it's probably gonna get gross at some points, so uh, buckle up. <laughs> This story begins not too long after the events of part four. James and Ed had moved in with Jabba's parents and left Jabba all by her lonesome. Do we get a reappearance from Grandma? Because she's my favorite character. <laughs> Conveniently, there's an anime convention about 45 minutes away, and James gets the idea for all of us to go, as he and Ed used to go to conventions back when Ed was younger, and Jabba was somewhat less of a spiteful bitch than she was now, but only slightly, mind you. <laughs> so yeah, he wanted to go again. You see what freedom can offer? Oh God, it's such a beautiful thing. Do it, Ed, do it, James. <laughs> it, it's not for me probably, but I'm glad that uh, they got something that they can enjoy together. So we drive to the convention and it seems like it's gonna be a good time. I, being the nerd that I've always been, dash right to a booth selling Naruto stuff and buy an Akatsi ring. Akatsi? What is that? <laughs> I don't watch Naruto. A headband and an Anbu mask. With my haul of nerd treasure, I return to my party to see them talking to what can only be described as a giant grease goblin that smelled much like fried coom. <laughs> Um, I, that's not a smell that I know. <laughs> Give me something I can relate to. We shall simply name him Greaser, or G for short. 
Apparently, he knows James from somewhere. And James has ascended from the neckbeard voice. I think Greaser is going to get the neckbeard voice now. So James said, Yeah, I, I recently left Jabba. It was just too much, G. <laughs> I couldn't handle it anymore. Greaser. Yeah, good for you, man. <laughs> You're better off without that chick. Hey, have you ever thought about dating again? James. Well, yeah, but I wouldn't even know where to start. G. Eh, don't worry. <laughs> I'm an expert when it comes to women. Every hot chick in this building could be mine if I wanted them. <laughs> and that's all because I understand the female mind. <laughs> all right, I'm going to have to do the Vulcan V meld. Uh, I don't think that's true. I don't think even women understand women's minds. Uh, a man's mind, I mean, there's not that much to, to understand. <laughs> uh, good lord. Uh, what about your son? Does he need help finding a girlfriend? Ed interrupts. Well, first, I'm gay, and second, I don't really care for a relationship right now. Wow, Ed also lost his neckbeard voice. It all had to do with getting away from Jabba. This is amazing. G. Uh, well, okay. Yeah, he wants to show off all those uh, pickup lines, uh, pickup artist tips that he got off of YouTube. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, can I get you the number? <laughs> you know that this dude is going to be a dumpster fire, and I'm loving it. Uh, G turns his attention to James. Hey, but I'm telling you, you stick with me, and you'll have these bitches breaking down your door in seconds. <laughs> I know all the secrets. <laughs> uh, yes, the ancient knowledge. <laughs> He truly believes it. Come on, man. There is no magic bullet, okay? Women are individuals as much as uh, incels would have you think otherwise. Oh, God. At this point, I pull James and Ed aside and tell them, do not listen to anything that this man says. <laughs> it will only end badly. And so he starts leading us around the con, it seems like James and Ed didn't listen to OP's warning at all. They're <laughs> just like, whatever. We're looking to get some chicks, bro. <laughs> and then this really attractive woman walks by us. G pushes her out of the way with a, Hey, move out of the way, idiot. And we all just stare at this man. OP, dude, why did you do that? G, uh, trust me. It's all part of the plan. That girl will come crawling back to me any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell 100% that this dude got every piece of pickup advice ever from an incel forum. <laughs> Which, if you couldn't tell, was probably not the place to go. Don't listen to those dudes. They're celibate. <laughs> Involuntarily. <laughs> Oh, God, this is a, a beautiful thing. A failed attempt at negging a complete stranger. You think she's going to come crawling back? She's just going to walk away and be like, yeah, what an asshole. <laughs> OP, huh? <laughs> G, I'm telling you guys, women like it when you treat them like trash. And they want you to show them who the alpha is and put them in their place. <laughs> Hey, just watch. <laughs> if this works, I will eat my hat. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, uh, it was at this point that the cynical side of my personality took over, and I began to wonder just how much entertainment I could gather from this grease ball. So it was time for some fun. OP? Oh, yeah. Show us all how to show women who the real alpha is. <laughs> Don't encourage him, or maybe do. You know there's going to be some fireworks. Ed, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> OP, 
just having some fun. Just please, both of you don't actually listen to anything that this idiot says. So we continue to walk around the convention. Obviously, that woman did not come back. <laughs> what happened to the crawling back? It didn't work out. Oh, that's too bad. I, who would have expected that? <laughs> Until we come across someone who's dressed as Sailor Moon. Aw, leave Sailor Moon alone. <laughs> G then looks right over at us and says, Watch how I pull this woman. <laughs> It'll be easy. He walks up to the cosplayer and begins talking. G, hey, I love your costume. Hey, could I get a picture with you? Cosplayer, sure, no problem. G has me snap a picture on his phone, and as I'm taking the picture, he starts to pull the cosplayer closer, and his hand begins to drift. I tell him the picture's being taken, and he goes right back to staring at the cosplayer. Okay, so just be a convention creep? Is that your strategy? <laughs> it doesn't seem like that's gonna work out too well. G then throws his line, uh, so, I have a hotel room for the next couple days. Uh, maybe you could come by later on. Cosplayer, um, not interested, G. Uh, come on, baby. I could be your tuxedo mask for the night. Cosplayer, louder and in a slightly deeper voice, I'm a fucking guy. <laughs> oh shit, damn, you looking real cute. What's your name? Uh, so my name is Felix. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> I'm killing myself. What a twist! <laughs> G's face goes white as he throws his hands up, backs away, and says to Ed, uh, "I found one for you, bro. Good luck." Oh, come on, G! <laughs> you should just press on. You got this far. <laughs> Why not live a little? <laughs> Uh, the cosplayer then begins to storm off, and G just comes back and says, If that was a girl, it would have worked. Uh, trust me, I, I laid my game down right. <laughs> His game, he says. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I just smile and say, Oh yeah, bro, <laughs> you got this. <laughs> You laid your game down quite flat. <laughs> Just keep encouraging him to make a fool of himself. I love it. Oh, so we continue to walk until we encounter another cosplayer, this time dressed as an over-sexual Blair the Cat from Soul Eater. He then literally stares at her and starts to drool. Yes, he literally started drooling over this cosplayer. Come on, literally? It's a figure of speech, isn't it? <laughs> Nobody actually drools unless they have mental... Oh, wait, yeah, okay, he probably did start to drool. <laughs> uh, G, you see that outfit, guys? Oh, she's practically begging for me to talk to her. <laughs> uh, OP, uh, no, she isn't. It's just a cosplay, G. Please, a woman only wears that type of outfit when she wants someone to look at her. A real alpha knows these things. She wants to be grabbed and showed who the boss is. At that point, you gotta pump the brakes. Be like, do not assault that person. <laughs> we are going to have a problem. I will hit you, James. That's disgusting, dude. You can't possibly believe that. Dude, James is transforming into Arnold, slowly but surely. He might have been browbeaten by his wife for a little bit, but there is a, a true alpha lurking just below the surface. And OP is also on board, saying, I'm drawing the line here, dude. Please, do not try that. That girl is literally just minding her own business. G, <laughs> watch me. He then begins to walk up to the girl, and I sprint over to her to tell her about his plan, and she bolts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's one way to deal with it. I would have probably punched the dude, though. 
This is just a bad situation all around. Why are you still hanging out with this guy? <laughs> He's good for a laugh, but yeah, this is about where we have to part ways. I, I can't be seen with you. Jesus. G says, Dude, why would you do that? I had that girl in the palm of my hand. <laughs> Ed, you were literally going to assault some random woman for your own ego? That is all types of not okay, G. You just don't know what a real alpha is. I mean, look at who raised you. Uh-oh. James, excuse me? Oh, boy, this... <laughs> I think they are going to part ways. And G just might end up getting punched in the mouth. <laughs> this has more fireworks than I ever expected. G says, hey, My dick's been in your wife's mouth more than yours has. And trust me, you wouldn't know what to do with a woman like her. She always tells me how pathetic you are and how small your pecker is every time I come over. You can't even pay the bills in your own house, so your wife has to come to me to get help. What kind of weak little bitch can't even put? He is then interrupted by a straightforward punch right to the face. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's beautiful. James threw this punch out of nowhere, much to mine and Ed's shock. I mean, considering the line of conversation, I wouldn't have been that shocked by it. I would have been like, yeah, that's, this is basically what he deserved, talking that type of trash. Who's the real alpha now? <laughs> G then <laughs> falls to the ground and starts wailing and flailing about on the ground, holding his mouth. <laughs> James just walks over him. And looks back at the both of us saying, we're leaving. Let's go. <laughs> oh, James. That is quite an exit. <laughs> I'm proud of you. We then head to the local McDonald's for some food. After the con where James informs us that he brought his magic cards. Hey. <laughs> so we start playing. And after a while, the Sailor Moon cosplayer also walks into that McDonald's. He looks over to my table and sees us playing magic and asks, Can I play with you guys? My cards are in my car. We all agree, and then he looks slightly concerned. Cosplayer, wait, that stinky guy isn't with you anymore, is he? Ed? Nah, we left him at the convention. I uh, really like your costume. It it's nice. Cosplayer, thanks. Be right back. When he leaves, I instantly turn to Ed. OP, dude, you got a crush on him, don't you? <laughs> Hell yeah! Looks like Ed is gonna be the tuxedo mask tonight. Bow, chicka, bow. No, that, actually, that's probably not what's gonna happen. They're gonna have a meaningful relationship long term. I don't just want it to be one night banging in a hotel and then it's over. <laughs> that's not a happy ending. I mean, it is, but then you feel disgusting about yourself the next day. You need a shower. <laughs> Ed doesn't deny the crush and just says, Shut up, sockhead. <laughs> OP, dude, you totally do, so ask him out. Ed, he's just gonna reject me. What's the point? Uh, plus, I don't even know if he's gay. Now, this man was extremely flamboyant and was also currently cross-dressing, so <laughs> I thought the chances were as good as any. <laughs> If he's not gay, then he's at least curious. So yeah, shoot your shot. The worst thing that you could possibly be told is no. Actually, a commenter corrected me. The worst thing you could possibly be told is ew. <laughs> uh, but then uh, they won't get to play magic. So yeah, just ask him. It's going to be fine. One way or the other, just, just take the leap. But OP decides to, to pad their chances a little bit and says, well... How about I find out for you while we're playing magic? Ed, just don't say anything too bad. Who do you think I am, G? <laughs> he comes back and we start playing. During this time, he informs all of us that he is in fact gay and currently single. Of course, Ed, still being nervous about rejection, says nothing to him and smiles awkwardly whenever he speaks to him. OP, 
So, what's your name, bro? Cosplayer. Oh, you can call me Leah, Ed. It's a nice name. Leah. Thanks. You're all really nice. Hopefully, I'll see you again tomorrow. James. Well, we're going back to Springfield tonight. For all of you wondering, this took place in the state of Ohio. Ed, James, and myself all hailed from Springfield, Ohio, and this event was in Columbus. And there's no mention of my favorite place in Ohio, Dayton! <laughs> Leah, well, I live in Yellow Springs, so maybe I'll run into you guys one day. Ed, who knows? Leah, well, it's getting late. See you guys. As he leaves, he rubs Ed's shoulder as he walks by and throws him a look. <laughs> I take note of this instantly. OP, dude, go talk to him. <laughs> You're gonna miss your window. Here it is. It's fleeting. If you had one shot, w would you take it or let it slip? Vomit on a sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Ed, uh, but I... OP, but nothing. You're a good guy with a great heart, and you deserve a shot at happiness. Go talk to that guy that you are so clearly interested in. Ed, well, what would I say? OP... Just ask for his number. He doesn't live that far away. Just ask to go to Young or something else that you like to do. But please, God, don't talk about hentai. <laughs> Not yet, anyways. <laughs> That'll come up a bit later, Ed. Uh, fine, uh, just stop hounding me. <laughs> He's slipping back into his neckbeard voice. So Ed walks up and walks back about five minutes later with Leah's number in hand and a date for next Saturday. Yeah, you did it, boy. <laughs> to this day, I have never seen a bigger smile on this man's face than in that moment. Ed had secured himself a boyfriend. I mean, well, not yet, but if you already read part five, you do know that this continues on. About another week passes, and I ask to go to Friday Night Magic with James. We end up going to the local game shop that's now sadly closed. Rip epic loot. Oh, pandemic's been tough for everybody, I'll tell you that much. At the tournament, James introduces me to all his magic friends, one of whom was a girl named Mary. There's something about Mary. <laughs> she was an average-looking, nerdy girl in her 30s, and she was a true sweetheart. About halfway through the tournament, Mary comes to sit by me. Mary, so how well do you know James? OP, well, he's my best friend's father, so only a bit, I guess. Why? Mary, don't tell him, please, but I've had the biggest crush on him for about two years now. <laughs> now, you're coming and you're telling me this even though you've just met me because secretly deep down in your heart, you want me to tell him. Isn't that the truth of the matter? Isn't that something that only a true alpha would know? <laughs> uh, OP, what? <laughs> Mary says, shh, I don't want him to know. He's married. It's not right to think about a married man like that. OP, he's divorcing Jabba. Mary just cracks into the biggest smile and says, really? <laughs> I hate to be the bearer of the best news. Oh, wait. No, I don't. That's awesome. Everybody's getting laid in this episode. <laughs> OP, yeah, just tell him how you feel. You never know what could happen. James then comes to sit over with us after his match concludes. And during this time, Mary wastes no time and makes her move. It's probably because she's smelling all those alpha pheromones, you know? <laughs> Just gets those 30-year-old nerd girls all hot and bothered. <laughs> Friday Night Magic is the breeding grounds. <laughs> uh, God, I'll stop. <laughs> Mary says, James, I I'm sorry to hear about you and Jabba. James, <laughs> don't be. I'm better off. Mary, so are you doing anything tomorrow? James, well, not really. Why? Mary, have you been to the Sakura Steakhouse yet? James, not yet. Why? <laughs> Stop asking why. You know why at this point, don't you? 
<laughs> just blurted it out. Are you asking me out on a date? I'd love to go. Mary keeps uh, pushing the front line forward, though. Well, I was hoping that we could go. James, uh, sure, me, you, and the rest of the gang, and we'd have a great time. OP, face palm. <laughs> Mary, oh, well, I was hoping it would be just the two of us. James, well, what about the others? Why should only we get to have the fun? Oh, James. I understand you've been out of the game for a long time, friend, but <laughs> at least pick up what somebody's putting down. Is this embellished? It has to be embellished, right? Guys are clueless, but at this point, how can you be this clueless? Uh, OP, head desks. As I'm sure we all do at this point. Mary, well, I was hoping that it could be... A date. <laughs> Spell it out. Just <laughs> one hundred percent. Nothing left up to uh, mystery. Yeah, D A T E. <laughs> Spell it out. Uh, James. Oh, uh, really? With me, <laughs> Mary? Of course. Who else? <laughs> uh, the whole gang. <laughs> it would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, James, my sweet summer child, or sweet summer man child. <laughs> James just says, uh, sure. <laughs> he seems really enthused about it, doesn't he? Maybe he doesn't like Mary. Maybe that's why he's playing it all coy. I guess we'll have to find out in part five. But yeah, that's basically how it went from there. They all went out and had a great time and are still together to this day. That's where this story ends. Hopefully I can get started recounting some game shop tales before too long, but who knows. Also, these are not word for word recounts of what was said, but overall, yeah, all of this stuff was said. I did inform you that this story just sounds extremely fake, so uh, take that as you will until we meet next readers. I don't really even bother with the stamp of like, is this fake, is this real anymore, as long as I enjoy the story. Oh, it's not neckbeardy enough, etc, etc, like, just, just consume <laughs> and let it become a part of you and uh, process it as you will. Not all the stories are going to be perfect, not all the stories are going to be believable, but yes, sometimes truth is stranger than fiction, okay? <laughs> if you haven't had any experiences like this, then good. <laughs> I hope that uh, your, your worldview continues to stay untainted by beards, but there are a lot of people out here that have had experiences like this. I've met an incel or two in my time, and that was way before they even had a term for it. <laughs> but the dude thought he was like the, the biggest ladies man in the world, and he definitely wasn't. <laughs> I'll probably have to tell these stories sometimes, make some, some posts of my own eventually, but that's uh, later on down the road. As for this, I, I am glad that we get to see how James and Ed ended up with some Mavades and gentle thems, you know? Because it is really important to have a partner in life, you know? No man is an island. I love to say that, oh, I stand on my own, don't need nobody else, but the truth is, I definitely do. My wife is my rock. I would not be as, as able or, or brave to do half the things that I do without her, you know, having my back, encouraging me, believing that it's all going to work out for the best. As I've said before, she's the reason that this YouTube channel exists today. So you definitely do need, a, a, I was going to say second in command, but it's not a second in command. It's a co-pilot, a partner. And it seems like the stars aligned and found better matches for these beards, which is uh, really the best we could hope for. In part five, I'm sure we're going to hear a little bit more. It's going to be beautiful. I'm going to love it. And finally saw through Jabba and completely cut her off. Good job. You've just taken the first step to winning your balls back. <laughs> ah, how did these get up here? My Journey to Reform a Neckbeard, Part 5, Return of Karma. Karma? Uh, never heard of her. <laughs> so, 
I know I said the next part of the story would be me getting them back into the dating world, but that part really just sounds extremely fake. And the part that he's talking about is the 4.5 part that we read in the previous episode. Honestly, doesn't read as all that fake to me. A lot of times reality is stranger than fiction, so I mean, I just let it roll off my back. If you said it happened, then all right, I guess it happened. Maybe embellished, whatever, <laughs> but it probably did happen. Like, as I went through trying to recount some of these events, they honestly just seemed like textbook neckbeard memes. <laughs> Those are the best. They were just so outlandish that there's honestly no way that anyone could believe it. Hell, I don't even believe it, and I was there. But if you want to hear it, just let me know, and I will post it regardless. And it has been posted, and luckily we did all of this in order. It's big brain time. I guess that makes the intro for part five kind of confusing, but... <laughs> it is what it is. We're just gonna roll with it. That's fine. But today we dive into the downfall of Jabba and some sweet, sweet retribution. Yes, beard tribution. <laughs> but first, since so much has changed since the first story, I feel like a new cast list is in order. So uh, here it goes. Me, that's OP, aka Teach, a math major who had renounced my life as a f boy, Slightly overweight, but still super into lifting weights. <laughs> I like how you just dropped that one in there. I don't know about math nerds being all that popular with the ladies, but like I said, if you said it happened, <laughs> I guess it happened. Or probably slightly embellished. <laughs> but either way, it doesn't seem to have much consequence in the actual stories, so uh, we just go slide past that one. We've also got Ed, of course, the former neckbeard in question, no longer has the neckbeard voice. He is a man who was finally able to accept himself and learn to love himself and his new boyfriend, whom I will introduce later in the story. And we might have met him in the last part as well, dressed up in a Sailor Moon cosplay. <laughs> James is Ed's father, and a man who was lacking a spine. He was a sweet man who was being controlled by a shrill and evil little troll. That's right, the one and only beard left in this story, that is Jabba. Yeah, that is the shrill evil troll aforementioned. Ah, I could go on, but just read the last story. Or you can listen to it read to perfection by the amazing Moon Horse at the following link. His videos are amazing. I love them all. Yeah, Moon Horse is a pretty cool guy. He goes to space and doesn't afraid of anything. <laughs> We've also got Ed's grandmother, my personal favorite of the saga, really. She's a loving old school black grandma who had nothing but love and pride for the amazing man who was her grandson. Her personality is that of every loving black in every black movie ever. Every loving black. <laughs> oh boy. Did we miss a word there? <laughs> but regardless, yeah, her language was that of a drunken sailor. This made for some very interesting conversations and some super funny lines like, If we went to hell for sucking Pekka, your mama would have the first ticket there. <laughs> Head of the line, she got that fast pass in place. <laughs> Bolt the kitty is a black and white cat that Ed and James took out of the pit that they used to call home, full of energy and loves them both more than anything. Honestly, probably my second favorite character in the saga, just on principle, you gotta love the furry ones. <laughs> so uh, let us begin in the fall of 2019. Ed and I were both on our final year of college, and as such, had a pretty easy class load. Sweet! <laughs> this allowed us to spend a lot of time doing other things that we enjoyed. And sadly, it also included doing our best to keep James away from Jabba. Ugh, doesn't he have a new girlfriend at this point? Hasn't he moved on? Why you wanna go back? <laughs> She was doing her best to claw her slimy ass back into his life by any means necessary, so this left me and Ed as his honor guard. 
At first, it was normal stuff, like blowing up his phone and asking to talk, saying things like, My love for you was always real! And, I've made you the person you are today, and so you need me! <laughs> and that always begs the question, do you love me because you need me, or do you need me because you love me? Pick the answer very carefully. Consider what you are about to say, because... No matter what the answer is, uh, I ain't coming back, but I did just want to know, though. <laughs> now, obviously, he considered it, but after a while, he got sick of all that BS and finally saw through Jabba and completely cut her off. Good job. You've just taken the first step to winning your balls back. <laughs> ah! How did these get up here? She then tried that classic, You're nothing without me! And James then went off on her. It was at this moment that he finally grew a spine and just completely let her have it about everything. From how she treated him to how she smelled and dressed. <laughs> That's hitting a woman where it hurts, honestly. Telling a woman that they're ugly and they smell? That cuts deep, man. Almost as deep as telling a man that he got a small wang or whatever. <laughs> Which I guess is a simpler insult. Maybe men are more sensitive after all. But I digress. <laughs> James also threw in that he regretted wasting all of those years on her. And all the cheating and the lies and so much more. At least 15 minutes straight of pure anger directed at Jabba. And she deserved every sentence, I guarantee. She honestly looked scared, as though James was about to hit her. I honestly wish he would've, cause lord knows I wanted to. <laughs> but then he pulled out the real dagger. James, I'm gonna say a prayer for you, but I'm not even sure that God has any mercy for a manipulative, hateful little devil. Go to hell. <laughs> Oh boy, that got spicy pretty quick, didn't it? <laughs> Jesus, dude. I hope that she just gets completely wrecked. I would love to see her crumble, her entire life just fall apart from this tongue lashing that she was issued from this man that supposedly she loved, but she just constantly took advantage of until he finally said, enough's enough. And I assumed that this conversation was happening on the phone, but, uh... Given the fact that he could reach out and punch her, <laughs> I guess not, decided to meet up with her for some reason and let her have it face to face, which is a really awesome thing to do, instead of just texting her a giant wall of text that details everything that's wrong with her, to hear it from the lips of the man you used to love. Ooh, <laughs> that is harsh. But again, nothing but what she deserves. So Jabba just left quietly, and I wish that I could say that that was the end of it all. But if it was, then we wouldn't have the rest of this story. Now would we? So this is when the little schemes begin. First, she tried to claim that Bolt was one of her cats that James had stolen. Yeah, anything to stay in his life at this point, I think. Honestly, I revel in it. It's so pathetic. It really demonstrates her character 100%. Jabba would always come around her own parents' house, trying to catch Bolt on the porch and take him away, but Bolt was so quick, and Jabba was so not, that <laughs> that plan never worked out. <laughs> but there was one time that she did manage to catch Bolt and try to run, or in her case, speed waddle, all the way back to her house. <laughs> Probably had to stop for breath a couple times. Ed and James both saw this and tried to run after her, but then Bolt managed to break free, scratch her eyes, and jump out of her arms and back into Ed's. <laughs> Cat scratch fever! The leg beard is on the receiving end this time around, which makes it different from Georgia beard, and I kind of like that better. The scratch was kind of serious and caused her to need an eye patch for a while. <laughs> Fat pirate. <laughs> uh, oh, Lord. At least that cat knows what's what. He's like, you're not my owner. <laughs> I have to go back home. Boom. Swipe to the eyes. The eyes, bro. God. Cats are scary sometimes. 
<laughs> Next, we get into Jabba's problems with Ed's new boyfriend. Uh, the best way that I can describe him would be Boy George. Extremely flamboyant and outspoken. Lover of all things nerdy. Hater of all things judgmental. And he was also a Christian. And if we're comparing him to Boy George, he could probably sing. Boy George got some pipes, man. <laughs> we will name him Leah and... You'll see why in a second. Jabba had zero tolerance for anything gay and made this 100% known, even though her opinion doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Nobody cares, just go die in your house alone. Leo was a really sweet guy and tried to convince him to bury the hatchet with his mother, as he also had problems with his parents accepting him, but eventually they came around and he thought the Jabba would too. Oh no. <laughs> You don't know the vitriol of a leg beard on the warpath. This was born out of only the best of intentions, but as Leia did not know the full story and relationship between Ed and Jabba, it was something that he couldn't account for. Wait, is he named Leia because Jabba's gonna capture him at some point and put him in a little slave outfit? <laughs> I remember that from Star Wars. I'm, I'm connecting the dots now. Is that some foreshadowing or just complete coincidence? I'm curious now. But anyways, the three of us head over to Jabba's pit of a house and it somehow looks even worse. We could smell the place from all the way outside. All the normal smells of cat crap and piss and trash, but this time with the smell of dead cats and cigarette smoke heavily mixed in. Oh God, those poor cats. Jesus, first steps into the house and the sight was too much for Leia to withstand and he legitimately threw up. He then said, this is how she lives? Uh, how can anyone live like this? Welcome to a beard nest. <laughs> this is why I can't go around looking at pictures and stuff. It gets me. Rotting food and bad dental hygiene are the two things that just... Ugh, really hurt me more than anything else in these stories. OP, man, you should have seen his room back in college. Leah, really? It was this bad? Ed, well, yeah, but you see it now. OP, believe me, this guy is not the same as he was back then. I got plenty of stories about this one. Bro, don't put your friend on blast in front of his boyfriend. What's going on here? You trying to make moves on the boyfriend, OP? Chill it out. <laughs> we don't need to embarrass our friends, damn it. That's a role that's reserved for, like, good mothers and grandmothers. Embarrassing you in front of your girlfriend, but, but not bros. <laughs> Come on, be a bro. Of course, Leah's excited about the prospect of learning about Ed's past, and he says, Tell me all of them! We then all start cracking jokes and laughing before Jabba finally emerges from the pit. Jabba, what do you want? Leah, hello, I'm Leah. I'm your son's new boyfriend. I was hoping that we could talk and Jabba cut him off. Son, why did you bring another one of these gays to talk to me? Leah, what did you just? <laughs> oh boy, here comes the fireworks and the possible enslavement if we're sticking with the naming conventions. <laughs> That's probably not very PC to say. Ed just pulls him away before he does anything that would get him in trouble with the law. Leah is obviously furious and walks back up to Jabba and tears into her with a fire that I had never seen before. The insults were flying so fast, it was crazy. And Jabba tried her usual, You burn in hell, you dirty! But that just made it even worse. A good five minutes of this, and Jabba ran back into the house, crying. Oh yeah, you pierced that armor for sure. <laughs> she might have been yelling, but she definitely heard what you said, if you cut her that deep. Good, I'm glad to hear it. She deserves nothing. Leia had just slain this mighty beast, and it was certain that she would never be seen again. But now we would get into the biggest retribution. Okay, so it seems like it didn't work out the way that I expected it to at all, but 
then I recalled that Leah did end up killing Jabba the Hutt in, uh, I think it was Return of the Jedi, so... <laughs> maybe the naming convention does fit after all. I didn't see it coming at all, but... I mean, props to Leah for getting this thing handled. And I do mean this thing, like the situation, but also Jabba herself. <laughs> and yeah, I guess she will be seen again because the story continues on. So first off, it needs to be stated that Jabba did not have a good relationship with her mother anymore, i.e. Ed's grandmother. She'd been sending very angry texts to all of them, laced with all types of profanity and hate. This made her grandma cry at how she had failed at raising her and how terrible she had turned out. Jabba was truly beyond help. I mean, as we saw from Wheezy Beard's mom, it doesn't really matter how good or put together the grandma is. Sometimes beards just are beards deep down in their core. Every parent makes mistakes. Yes, it's true. But every child <laughs> also makes mistakes. And to sit there and beat yourself up about them when you legitimately tried your best, I don't think there's any purpose to that. I have no doubts that grandma did her best and you really can't save somebody from themselves. So again, don't beat yourself up. Also a sad piece of information, this was also around the time that Ed's grandfather lost his life due to a heart attack. Oof, heavy. She refused to come to the service because, embrace yourself because I swear to you these are her exact words. She didn't want to be near that gay son of hers and the dad who had abandoned God and sided with a sinner destined for hell. <laughs> uh, you really think that God is going to be okay with this? You persecuting all your loved ones? You should read the New Testament. It's all about forgiveness and love. Not this Old Testament smiting that she seems so obsessed with. Jesus. So yeah, Jabba burned all her bridges and truly was left alone. Now, my friends, back to the downfall. So, what do you get when you combine cigarettes with a pile of clothes and a lot of trash and papers everywhere? You get exactly what you deserve. Boom! This is a Joker meme. You shot the dude in the face, right? Skip it up and that up. No, not a gunshot in the face. <laughs> Instead, you get a glorious fire hazard, as most hoarder houses are. It's just a death trap in there. Aside from all the mold and decaying things, you could get trapped under a pile of trash, which has happened. Uh, if the house catches on fire a little bit, yeah, everything is going to go up in smoke in no time at all, because there's just so much fuel laying around. So now I suppose Jabba gets to exist in a hell of her very own making. It's really fitting if you think about it. So yeah, Jabba was smoking one night and didn't properly put out her cigarette before throwing it away. This caused the trash can to set on fire, which caused the piles of trash and clothes by the trash can to catch fire, which then set the entire house on fire. Somehow, she managed to get out before everything burned down and without any injury to herself at that. Yeah, she's got the devil on her side or something like that. <laughs> You'd think at least smoke inhalation or something. But she had to watch as everything she owned burned to the ground before her very eyes. God, it's so poetic, <laughs> isn't it? This is justice. Oh my God. By the time the fire department got there, the house was ready to collapse and everything inside was burned. At first, she was excited because insurance would pay for everything and she would be in a better house than ever before. And yeah, she could probably destroy it just the same. <laughs> but when she called the company about a claim, well, turns out she didn't even have the policy anymore. <laughs> Congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> because James was paying the bill. And naturally, since he left her by her lonesome and the policy lapsed about six weeks ago, she was left with nothing. No clothes, no food, no money, no cats, no friends, no family, no home. 
it seems harsh, but yeah, I'm sticking with it. I give her no sympathy. She made this happen. Karma, Jesus, Shiva, Nasdaq <laughs> can be a really cruel bitch. And uh, it looks like now your chickens are coming home to roost. I mean, <laughs> what can I say about it? She had truly lost everything and came crawling back to her mother's house because she truly had nowhere else to go. But after the events of the funeral and everything else, the loving Christian woman had finally snapped. Grandma, imagine this being said in the old school black grandma voice, but I'm just gonna use the old people voice. <laughs> how dare you bring your old nasty ass over here? You don't know how much your daddy cried at night about you turning out this way. And now you have the nerve to show your face here after everything you've put so many people through. Jabba, how can you let your own daughter sleep in the streets? God wouldn't like you turning your back on someone. <laughs> oh, the irony. It's so rich and creamy and delicious. <laughs> nice. Uh, you could feast on it. Just take a big bite out of that irony. How does that taste? Like heaven? Grandma started crying at this point and just told Jabba to leave. Jabba protested and barged into the house and tried to sit down, but all three of us, Ed, Leah, and myself, were in the living room watching this. So I body block, and she kicks me right in the dick. <laughs> oh yeah. Leah sees this and screams at her to get the hell out. Jabba tries to speak to James by saying, Honey, I know you won't leave me with nowhere to go. <laughs> Ed, Mom, you need to leave. No one wants you here. Jabba, shut up, you useless gay lord. You have no right to speak to me. Ed finally loses it and pushes Jabba to the front door. Even in her most desperate moment, she can't just act contrite for the sake of somewhere to stay. She sticks to her guns 100%, which normally I would respect, but you're doing it out of, like, this vitriol. I don't understand. For your own flesh and blood. Why is it such a big deal? She obviously understands what God would actually want because she tried to play that card on her mother, but she just can't seem to play it on herself. Ugh, so enraging. But yes, good. Ed finally loses it, pushes Jabba to the front door. Jabba, how dare you put your hands on me? I'm your mother. Ed, then why don't you ever act like it? Jabba slaps Ed, and this is where Leah finally steps up again. Leah, leave now, or I will beat the shit out of you. Jabba, shut up, gay. I know you can't put your hands on me. You know that I can't put my hands on you. Well, this is a little thing called fuck around and find out, isn't it? <laughs> and surely Jabba did. Leah loses it and begins to beat the living hell out of Jabba. This lasts for a little while, but boy, it was satisfying to watch. <laughs> Blows being thrown, Jabba crying to stop, you can't hit a woman. <laughs> but Leah persisted with the glorious beating. It ended with him choking Jabba from behind in a headlock. If you get the reference by now, then props. Yeah, th that's what happens in Return of the Jedi. Leah chokes Jabba. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I did get the reference. Eventually, James pulled him apart, and Jabba ran out of the house and called the police. It took about 25 minutes for the police to get there, but since technically Jabba was a trespasser, the use of force was justified for her removal from the property. Oh yeah, gender doesn't come into that at all, does it? <laughs> the law is clear. I'm pretty sure this is why some people act like jerks without impunity. They're like, well, nobody's ever punched me before, so surely today won't be the day that I get punched in the mouth. And then, <laughs> some days, uh, it is the day. So good, beautiful, I hope you learned a little something, or a few little somethings. 
So yes, at the police's orders, Jabba had to leave or be arrested. And naturally, she did leave. But with nowhere to go, she just kind of began to wander. A giant slug beast just wandering the planet, eating anything in its path. <laughs> this shrill and hateful woman was now left with nothing but beaten and bruised and finally abandoned by everyone in her life. No friends, no home, no dignity. She had truly hit rock bottom. And even to this day, I don't feel the least bit bad for her. But this is where our story comes to an end. Is she really still out there on the streets? <laughs> Did she find another man to leech off of or something? But I agree 100% with OP, whether she's in the streets or not. I don't give a single damn. You made your bed, now lie down in it. You dug your grave, <laughs> now lie down in it. It's the path you chose. It's exactly what you wanted, so good. <laughs> you got it. Congratulations. You played yourself. So, epilogue. Where are we now? Well, OP currently lives in Concord, North Carolina, and also teaches math for CMS, the biggest school district in the state, at one of the roughest schools in the city. It wasn't my first goal to become a teacher, but as I got tired of seeing black and brown boys underserved in these schools, I knew it was time to act. I'm currently in a relationship with a woman named Emma, and I love her to pieces. Also, obsessed with the stock market. Hey bro, uh, let's talk crypto sometime. <laughs> stock market's cool and all, but I'm looking for those stupid gains, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ed graduated from college around the same time that I did, but decided to go right to his master's. That amazing coding I spoke about turned into a full ride and a teacher's assistant position at Ohio State University. He currently plans on becoming a college professor after he finishes up his master's in the spring, hopefully. He and Leah are currently engaged to be married, and I'm hopefully going to be able to go back and attend their wedding... Yeah, hopefully, because work obligations. Ed really settled with the first one that treated him right? Oh, man. <laughs> it's hard for me to believe, but I guess sometimes it does work out that way. Statistically, it has to work out that way sometimes, right? I just hope Ed doesn't feel like he's missing something from his life down the road. I'd encourage taste and a few more flavors if you know what I'm saying, but uh, it's your life, bro. <laughs> you can do what you want. James currently owns his own semi-truck and is on his way to scaling it into his own business. He still lives in his grandmother's old house with Bolt and his new girlfriend, Mary, whom he met while playing Magic. He is also now divorced from Java, which happened in November of 2019, and he has never looked back. And he shouldn't. Does he even know where she is? See her behind the laundromat sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, what's up? I don't even have to come here no more because I got a washing machine. <laughs> I just wanted to see how you're doing. I mean, that's pretty spiteful. After so long, just move on from your ex. Let him do whatever. You know, it doesn't actually matter. My wife creeps on my exes more than I creep on them. <laughs> I haven't checked up on them in years. And my wife's like, hey, what's her name again? Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, it's funny shit. Jabba ended up getting arrested for prostitution. Uh-oh. You heard me right. She apparently had been sucking wangs for money for about three years and finally got caught. Now, I believe prostitution should be legal, but can't we just sit back and enjoy someone horrible getting all that they deserve? Last time I was in my hometown, she managed to get a job at the local Motel 6, and she stays there as well. And this was because her pastor took pity on her and put out the word for her to get this job. But it was after about six months of being homeless and almost going to jail, she is also starting to lose her teeth, which tends to happen if you live on the street for long enough, yes. I'm also not going to comment too heavily on what OP believes about prostitution, but I will just say I live in the Philippines and I have seen the ravages of the sex tourism industry it's not a pretty thing, so I'm pretty torn on that topic. Is it a victimless crime? Eh, sorta, sometimes maybe. 
Like most issues in this life, it is neither completely black nor completely white. Very, very gray area that uh, I ain't going to get into. <laughs> so grandma, sadly in 2021, lost the battle to COVID-19. Oh, crap. Why we always got to lose the best ones? <sighs> grandma was so proud of Ed for all that he accomplished and loved him to death. She was even there when he proposed to Leah. I know she still watches over all of us from heaven and that she's reunited with grandpa up there. During her funeral, Jabba, of course, tried to show up and gain all the pity points that she could, but no one was having it. In her will, she left a few of us some things. James was to get the house, as in her own words, she didn't trust Jabba to take care of the house. <laughs> Good call. Ed and Jabba were to receive a 90-10 split with Ed, getting the 90% of the sale price of her entire portfolio. This totaled to about 125000 which Ed then used to purchase a house for him and Leah to start their lives together in. Even though it was about 12000 that Jabba managed to get, she still managed to blow all of it on liquor and food and the lottery. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You could create such a better situation for yourself, and you freaking drank it. Oh, God, job. <laughs> Just hopeless. Yeah, she's a write-off, man. Let's hope that cirrhosis takes her sooner rather than later. Ugh, Jabba was convinced that uh, she would win the lottery and be richer than all of us. <laughs> uh Obviously, uh, that didn't happen. Yeah, the lottery is just a tax on stupid people. People who don't understand how numbers work. Is it possible to win? I'm sure it is, but you're much more likely to get struck by lightning two or three times, according to some statistics that I saw. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I let wifey play, you know, for fun, because we're doing well and stuff. It's nice to dream, and really, you do never know. <laughs> I might have the biggest shock of my life one day, but um, if you're on the ropes struggling to get by, do not buy scratchers or lottery tickets or any of this crap. The house always wins. But, you know, I'm sure my audience is smart enough to know that. <laughs> and Jabba, uh, I don't think she has YouTube. <laughs> we get on that Motel 6 internet connection. <laughs> uh, sucker. And this, my dear friends, is the complete story of how I changed my current best friend from a stinky neckbeard to an overall amazing person. As I said before, the part about them getting back to dating is still up in the air, but as I recounted it, I concluded that there was no realistic way that anybody would believe it was real. I don't know, I'm pretty gullible, I guess. <laughs> I can still post it if you guys want, because it is honestly quite the tale, or I could get into some other things that happened to me while working at a GameStop, or maybe even share some cringe stories from my own past. But leave a comment below and tell me what you would like to hear. Until next time we meet, readers. Ah, it is an overall very wholesome story. I'm so glad that both Ed and James were able to get saved. Goodness, although it wasn't just by the grace of OP that all of this happened. I want to be very clear that it is what is inside of Ed and James, the, the need to strive for something better that allowed them to change. And the truth is, a lot of neckbeards or legbeards don't have that. We see a very good example of that in this saga with Jabba. She simply can't get rid of her own vices for long enough to lift herself up out of this hole. Which is sad, but at the end of the day, no sympathy. Like I said, <laughs> this is exactly the path you chose. I do feel a bit bad about Jabba being uh, not allowed any pity at her own mother's funeral, but <laughs> pity would be wasted on her, honestly. She would squander it 100%, and that is absolutely unacceptable. So yes, I did enjoy this beard story. It didn't go to the dark places that we've seen some of them go. We just got a happy ending out of the whole thing. Everybody got a girlfriend, everybody got a house. Hey, we're all getting laid. <laughs> it's pretty cool, all things considered. 
It's also pretty cool that OP ended up in North Carolina. Hey, I went to A school at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. <laughs> Just kind of another uh, little line that connects us all together, which I always enjoy following. But yeah, this story made me quite happy overall. It was good to wash away the cringe of some of the previous day's tales. My journey to reform a neck beard part six nesting if you haven't seen the first five parts uh that link is in the description i it might be links it might be a playlist i'm not really sure what i was doing around this time but i do know that i am terrified to see yet another neck beard nest please tell me that it's like a nice nest suitable for children and pets to live in and not like an actual beard nest that's just uh, a disgusting pile of trash i guess we'll see greetings all hi user random teacher I have returned to tell an unexpected story of me reforming my former but relapsing neckbeard friend, Ed. Oh, man, it is the nest. It is the neckbeard nest, isn't it? I'll be real with you, the beard is hard to kick. You got that beard on the inside, you can't really pluck it out. It takes like a deep desire to change, either for yourself or someone else, usually for yourself though. I honestly didn't expect to have to write this story, but... Recent events have called for another installment. Ah, uh, you hate to see it, honestly. <laughs> but before we get into the cast, there's a trigger warning. So let's refer to it as uh, just self-ending, committing Minecraft, as it were, and uh, manipulation. There will be a TLDR at the end of this story if you want to nope out at any time. Boy, things are getting dark for Ed. See, the, the deeper you go, the deeper you go. The darker it gets. Ugh, I don't like it. I hope our little boy comes out of this okay. So, the cast, OP, aka Teach, now a 25-year-old year three teacher in my final year of teaching. Public school systems are impossible to work within. <laughs> I mean, if it's not for you, it's not for you, I suppose, but yeah. I don't think the third graders would be all that bad. Don't put me in a high school class, I will fight those kids. But the third graders, oh, come on! They're kind of cute, a little bit, when they're not throwing up somewhere or picking their butts. <laughs> Typical former high school nerd into anime and weightlifting when I'm not getting all the ladies and banging up. No, I'm joking. Oh, I thought we were getting party demon vibes, whoa! <laughs> uh, oh my god. Thank you for that. I felt the heat like slowly turning up in my brain. I'm like, really? I'm gonna have to crucify another OP. All right, bring it on through. <laughs> Ed is a 25 year old former, but relapsing neckbeard IT manager for a massive company, all around amazing guy with a great boyfriend. He doesn't deserve this. I just wanna see him cast off his shackles of beardery. Leah is the 22 year old nerdy boyfriend of Ed. Quite feminine in his dress and how he carries himself, but is extremely loving and supporting of Ed. And that's really what counts, you know? I'm not gonna judge anybody's relationship because I don't gotta be in the damn thing, all right? <laughs> James is Ed's truck driver father who is always on the road. He owns the semi that he drives and he makes great money doing it. Really, that's what Honker Donkers needs to do. I'm gonna shoot him a message, be like, hey, why don't you just buy the truck outright? <laughs> Can you do that? Take out a loan? Uh, anything's better than riding with Chris, right? Jabba is Ed's fat, sloppy, courtesan mother. And I ain't joking about that courtesan part. She's a lady of the night. Hateful, spiteful, and manipulative. Wait, I thought, I thought she got the boot in the last part. I thought we were all done with her, but yeah. I guess that's how mothers be. <laughs> they come back around every now and then, don't they? First, if you aren't already up to speed on the story up to this point, basically I took a journey to reform a neckbeard who is currently my best friend. I could just write it out, or you could listen to it. Masterfully narrated by the amazing Soothing Moon Horse, or the equally as amazing Cringe Lord, Red X. 
I'd much rather be cringe lord than soothing, honestly. That's what we're here for, isn't it? <laughs> Someone was nice enough to compile most of these stories into a playlist, which can be found over here. Yeah, that was Greeny that compiled those. I recognize that username. And now that that's out of the way, let's uh, get into the story. I'm not linking the playlist that he linked. I'm linking my own playlist because you're on my channel, damn it. We're doing things my way. No salt, though. <laughs> so this starts in late 2021 around the holiday season. And I get a call from James asking to talk about Ed. Honestly, I wasn't sure what was going on. I knew he hadn't been in great spirits after being alone for the holidays this year, but I didn't think anything of it. Oh, bro, the holidays, the worst time to, to leave someone alone like this. You know, rates of self ending go up during the holidays. So definitely think something about it. Don't dwell, you know, don't make it weird. But just acknowledge that, hey, maybe we need to, you know, send him a postcard or something like that. Ed was feeling it this year because I live in North Carolina now. James is always on the road and Leo was taking a trip with his family. So Ed was by himself for the holidays. But I hop on the call with James where he tells me that Ed has been reaching out to the only family that he had left in the city, Jabba. Oh, that's a terrible decision, Ed. Why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> we learn this lesson, all right? But again, moms, you know, they're always there. Jabba had recently been hospitalized because she had OD'd, and Ed was the only family that they could get in contact with. Jesus. When he got to the hospital to check on her, she laid it on extremely thick with the, I'm so glad you came to visit me, son. I'm so sorry. I have no one left but you. You're the only light in this world. The only light in this world. <laughs> uh, that is laying it on rather thick, is it not? Quit blowing smoke, Ma. What do you want? <laughs> she also told Ed that she did that to uh, end herself, which was an extremely touchy subject for Ed. Now, Ed had a friend in middle school who did exactly that and told him that he was thinking about doing it, but Ed didn't do anything or tell anybody, and to this day, he still blames himself for that friend's death. Oof, that is a lot of baggage to carry around, honestly. And his mom probably knows this. This is exactly the button that she needs to hit in order to uh, lure him back in, I'm pretty sure. This all made Ed extremely sensitive to self-ending, especially when he thinks that he can stop someone, no matter who they are. Honestly, at the time, I didn't think that I could really do anything for him because that was his decision to make, and he truly believed that she would come around and they might be able to be the family that he always wanted. If she didn't figure it out within the first couple decades, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I believe in holding on to hope, but at a certain point, I don't know, man. You can't keep hurting yourself on behalf of somebody else. Even your own mother. And I hate that because I got a good relationship with my family. When I see broken families, it breaks my heart. But yeah, the reality is sometimes it's not salvageable. After a few months, Ed gives me a call sobbing that him and Leah had broken up and not knowing what to do. It takes a couple of weeks to calm him about this situation and get him back into the swing of things, but I couldn't wrap my head around why they had broken up, so I decided to give Leah a call. Jabba. <laughs> One word. <laughs> I already know. Leah. Hey, Teach. How you been? OP. Honestly, pretty good. So, what's going on with you and Ed? He said you two broke up. Leah. Well, not really. I still love him, but Jabba is just so terrible. I can't deal with her anymore. I just had to take a break from the situation. I mean, a break is different from a break up, right? So you, you plan on coming back or something or only once she's out of his life? I honestly don't see myself getting this deeply involved. I'll be like, well, people make decisions, but it seems like OP is one of the helpers, you know? One of the fixers. My wife is a fixer. <laughs> She hears about someone else's problem and just loads that burden up on her back. And I, <laughs> I've tried to teach her to just stop it. Choose your battles. Only, only pick the stuff that's really important. To Ed, this does seem really important, so I'm glad you were there to do that for him, OP. At the time, I didn't really know the depth of the situation. 
and I was shocked that the same man who was willing to throw blows at the horrid she-beast was so willing to take a break from the mean words after he basically already handled her. Women like Job, they never give up, man. She's, she's just gonna peck you to death if you stay around that relationship. It's a good thing that she got out. Now I encourage Ed to do the same. That's the way that I would take this. OP, well, you knew exactly who she was and you were deep in that situation when you guys were dating early on. Honestly, it's pretty selfish to dip out now when you knew you weren't strong enough to handle her. Ed is crushed right now and that's on you, bro. I'll be real with you, I'm pretty torn about that statement. You are not obligated to stay in a relationship with anybody for any reason. The reason could be as simple as I'm not having fun anymore. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to see the world, something like that. I've had enough bad takes on this channel that I know a bad take when I see one, and uh, that is one of them, <laughs> if I'll be real with you, all right? Leah says, did you know she moved in with Ed? OP, naughty, baka! <laughs> I, I didn't really say that, but I thought it would fit here. <laughs> uh, the Chris Trucker disease has spread. Leah? Yeah, after she got out of the hospital, Ed said she would be staying with us for a couple weeks to figure out her next housing situation, and that was five months ago. Oh my god, you knew this would happen. She's a leech. <laughs> That's what she's all about. Emotion vampire, and also resource vampire. Like the fat vampire from Blade? What's her name? Pearl or something like that? <laughs> She's still horrible to me, and now, in my own home, she's horribly messy and never showers, has men over to the house at all times of the night, and for some reason, Ed can't seem to see exactly what she is. I don't know what changed about him, but he doesn't believe anything that I say about her to him. I'll just, I just needed to get away because it looks like he chose her over me. Five months, bro? I... <laughs> Leah's a keeper already for putting up with it that long. But yeah, Ed, you can't save Ed from himself. Part of me does understand it's his own mother, etc., etc., but how do you explain that through? That's a realization he's got to come to for himself. OP, I honestly had no idea, man. Sorry. How exactly did this start, Leah? All I know is she keeps saying how depressed she is and she wants to end herself and make the pain of her worthless life go away. OP, well, there's got to be a reason behind that. I'm going to call James. Leah, he knows the situation, but he can't help either. OP, well, there might be something I can do. I hang up on Leah after a bit and I hop on a call with James. James. Hey, what's up, Cheech? Did you need something? OP, do you know why Ed let Jabba move in, James? Well, I think she really will end herself if he kicks her out. Okay. <laughs> oh, no! Nothing of value was lost! I mean, honestly, human life, etc., etc., but come on, man. Is all this really worth hanging on to? I guess it is. She's a mother. She's a person. She might turn it around at some point, but hope is, is fading so fast. As a matter of fact, it's faded already. I don't know why it hasn't faded already for Ed. After hearing all this, I kind of get an idea what's going on, but I know there's nothing I can do about it at the moment because I had another month of school left. I kept in regular contact with Ed, never telling him that I knew about Jabba moving in. His mood stays stable but I could always catch the slightest hint of sadness in his words. Well, yeah, he's probably being berated by his own mother every single day. This is not something I think I could handle. I'd be like, look, Ma, you got to get up and out. Remember when I was 18, you kicked me out of the house? Well, I'm doing the same thing. You're 50. Figure it out. <laughs> then summer hits, and rather than booking a flight back to Ohio, James just takes me back in his truck. He had a load that someone paid him to take from Michigan to Florida, and on his way back, he picked me up as well. The trip back was fine. I did get to stop at a few truck stops with him and get the full trucker experience. I mean, you're not really getting the whole trucker experience until you do some crank and buy a lot lizard, but <laughs> probably don't do that. 
<laughs> All that aside, though, we finally hit Ohio and took a good rest. First thing I do is head over to Ed's place, and it has a strangely familiar smell to it, but it was faint. I didn't even bother knocking. I just used Leah's key to get in, and a normal-looking house is waiting for me. Oh. Oh, good. Thank God for that much. <laughs> Ed. Bro, what are you doing here? I didn't know you were going to be back in town, man. You should have told me. We, we could have planned the week out. OP. Well, I just decided to pop in and surprise you because you seem pretty down. I wanted to cheer you up. I don't know if I like this either, man. Don't ever pop up at my house. Use somebody else's key to let yourself in. <laughs> it's a good way to catch two in the chest, one in the head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't sign off on any of this. No matter how down I am, please don't show up at my house. Thanks. Best friend in the world? I don't care. Call me before you show up. Thanks. But maybe it's different between Ed and OP. What do I know? <laughs> Ed says, uh, well, relax, bro. I need to go back to looking for my cat. It's been three days since I seen that butthole. I don't know what could have happened to him. Just don't go in the basement, because I'm still cleaning it. OP, no problem, man. I'm headed out anyways. I instantly know that Jabba is living in Ed's basement. Just like a real-life hut living in a cave. Ookla chuka poo poo. <laughs> and he doesn't want me to know. Ed, if you're ashamed of the things that you're doing, why are you doing them? Let me just ask you that. See, that's the way I live my life. <laughs> That's why you gotta just live like an open book. It's so freeing. So I wait until the night time to explore, and honestly, I should have just not opened the door and waited for her to come up. When I entered the basement, I was instantly hit with the stench of yeast, rotting food, cigarette smoke, and what I can only describe as death. Have you ever smelled something like really, really dead, OP? <laughs> there's, no, there's not a whole lot of smells on the planet like it. If it really smelled like death down there, I don't think you'd be able to smell anything else over the smell of death. <laughs> the Febreze plugins at the top of the stairs did the decent job of keeping the smell trapped in the nest, but now the door was open and the smell punched everybody in its path. I headed down the stairs as each step worsened the smell and made me regret my decisions, but it was only going to get worse. Why the hell are you going down there? You, you gonna tell her hi? You gonna tell her that you missed her? <laughs> You'd have a real heart to heart. There's nothing good that's gonna come of this. Just forget about it, dude. Pull me out. <laughs> I looked over the side rails and saw a shirtless man leaning back in the lazy boy sleeping. And from the other side waddles a naked Jabba. <laughs> Like I said, nothing good's gonna happen. Uh, I instantly knew what was happening here and started to shout, what the f at the entire situation. And she yells at me to get the hell out. Well, I mean, she's well within a right to do that, honestly. <laughs> uh, I started to sprint up the stairs, but I slipped on an old pizza box and tumbled all the way down. Awkward. <laughs> At the bottom of the stairs, I get the full version of Jabba's new nest and just see piles of trash and clothes used all over the place and toys scattered throughout the room. I had stumbled into Auntie Nasty's puzzle basement. She wasn't wearing a shirt and I cried. <laughs> uh, oh, it's stuffed with Red X references. I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> at the top of the stairs comes Ed, furious at me that I had broken his one rule and went into the forbidden basement. Well, I'm equally mad because you lied about what was in the basement. I thought I'd help you clean up down here and I'm the one that should be truly offended. I don't know if you really want to lie to him, flip it on his head like that, but that's the line if you, if you do want to do that. <laughs> Ed demands that I leave and I just go for the night because I cannot stomach that smell anymore. I head to my grandmother's house and just stay there for the next couple of days, but finally after a week, Ed wants to speak. Okay, explain yourself, I guess. Ed? Dude, I asked you to stay out of the basement, 
Why did you go down there? Stay out of the basement. Isn't that a Goosebumps book or something like that? <laughs> OP. Uh, Leah and James told me that Jabba was living there, dude, so I knew it was happening. Why did you feel like you needed to lie to me about her living there, Ed? Because every time I tell someone, they get mad at me and try to get me to throw her out. OP. Well, have you been down there? <laughs> <laughs> really, it's, it's nobody else's business, I guess. Ed's trying to take care of his mom and do the right thing, and I, I totally get it, but yeah, Jabba is a scumbag, so <sighs> I'm really conflicted. <laughs> it goes on with no real breakthroughs happening, so I just tell him that I accept his decision and keep it pushing. That's the only way that you can go, OP. You can't force somebody to do something they don't want to do. Somehow she managed to manipulate Ed into believing that everyone was against her and wanted to self-end just because they hated her. See, she's dripping poison in his ears every single day. This ain't good. It's not a good look. I honestly found that hard to believe, but there it was, staring me in the face. After that day, I spent the next week coming up with a plan to break him of her spell, but I came up with nothing. Yeah, it's hard to fight a mother's... Uh, love? <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> that was when I got the idea of a tried and true intervention to make him see the truth. So I got Leah and James to head over to his house under the guise of helping him clean the basement a bit, and the smell had gotten worse. I mean, that's not really a lie. You are helping him to clean out the basement, are you not? <laughs> Take that big tub of trash outside. <laughs> Thankfully, Jabba is gone, so it seems like the clean will be easy, but oh, how wrong we were. The smell had fermented to such a point that it caused me to throw up. Oh, God. Maybe it really is like a dead body down there, dude. I've been to the LA morgue once in my life when I was like maybe 15 or 16 years old, and that smell has never left my brain. Yes, that is the throw up smell. That is the smell of death. <laughs> The piles had somehow absorbed the smell and was now dispersing it all throughout the house. The coomdums were in a nice pile and the toys were still all over the place. But now that I wasn't full of adrenaline, I could notice some additional things about this room. There were bags lining the corners, all filled with rotten food. Oh God, she's a pig. The bags were full of maggots and mice. Oh. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> and the smell just started to get worse. James and Leah couldn't take it anymore, so they head upstairs to get some bags to start. Where do you start with this? Oh! <laughs> Ed? Jesus, I, I didn't know her mental health had gotten this bad. Bro, this is your house, dude. You don't check on her in the basement? OP, what are you talking about? Ed, uh, well, she told me being forced to pick between some of her things makes her mental health act up and she wants to self-end. Uh, I should offer her some help. <laughs> this is all a ruse. I mean, she legitimately might be a hoarder, but if that's the case, she needs, like, clinical help, not a son who enables her, okay? OP, dude, she is playing you. It's just Shay all over again, but... Man, this time it's ruining your life, Ed. Dude, don't start. You don't know what it's like to struggle, so I don't want to hear it. Oh, yeah. Nobody knows the struggle but me. Welcome to the human experience. <sighs> That's probably not the way that you should go with it, but <laughs> that's my initial response. I'd have to step back, temper my words just a little bit. Everybody has struggled, Ed. What, do you want to play Oppression Olympics? Let's see which one of us has struggled more. No, it's valid. No matter what you've experienced, it's valid, okay? Somehow, through a moment of divine intervention, a mouse runs across my foot and causes me to jerk my leg back. I knock over a stack of bags in the process and sadly reveal a horrible sight. There, dead as a doornail, laid Ed's cat that he was looking for. That is kismet. That is divine intervention. 
Now do you see, <laughs> Ed? Madara? Oh my god! OP, dude, is that your cat? <laughs> Ed? Yeah, I didn't know he was down here, man! I swear I didn't know! And then mom just threw him away in a bag of trash? And you're still, you're still feeling like you, you need to do things for her, right? Yeah, oh, God. Ed then begins to cry hysterically, and I knew that this was my time to strike. OP, this is what she brought to your home, dude. You allowed this. Now it's time to fix it. Ed starts screaming at me. You think I wanted this to happen, dude? You aren't around. Dad's always gone. Leah left me and Mom was there. You think I wanted my goddamn cat to die? Hey, how stupid are you? OP then uh, responds in kind with the yelling, which probably is not the way to go, but maybe he'll hear you. Maybe. OP then tell me exactly how all this happened in your own home. Your boyfriend left you because you allowed that troll to push him away. Your cat died because you let this troll build a horde down here. This is all the result of your own actions. Probably would have been more effective if you didn't yell it, but okay. Me and Ed then start going at it until his anger breaks and he throws a punch at me. Honestly, I kind of expected this, so I was prepared and we fought for a couple of minutes until I managed to get him pinned. OP, are you done? Ed crying again. I never wanted any of this. I, I just don't have anyone left. <sighs> I mean, I get it. I get it, but it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. The longer you hang on to this relationship with your mother, the more people are gonna leave you. And even your mother doesn't really give a damn about you. She's using you. So it's time to invite her to leave and invite Leah back in ASAP. OP says about as much and he says, you know, that's not true, man. I'm always a phone call away and Leah loves you. Plenty of people are here for you. Finally, the rage was over and now we were on to the healing part. Yes, first thing to do when healing, get rid of the infection. Kick that bloated mess out on the street. We spend a few more minutes on the ground before the fateful moment when our hands touched and we looked into each other's eyes and we slowly began to lean in. Pause. <laughs> nah, just kidding. We both got up and headed upstairs. <laughs> ah, good fake out. Seeing Ed a bloody mess, Leah rushes over and they do the thing that normal couples did in that I missed you sort of moment but we had bigger things to take care of. It was time to remove this nesting beard. That's right, excise the Tuma. Ed decides to wait until Jabba is back so he can tell her to her face. Honestly, that's, that's the biggest manliest move I've ever seen. I would have moved her out in the middle of the night. <laughs> just, just called the cops when she showed up at the front door and asked why all her stuff was on the lawn. Like, get out, you don't live here anymore. No squatter's rights, no nothing. Eventually, Jabba returns, and she is shocked to see everyone over. She puts on her best impression of a normal person. <laughs> Ain't nobody buying this, honestly. Jabba. Oh, hello, everyone. What brings you all over here? Ed. Bob, I think it's time we talked about you moving out. It's been almost half a year for what was only supposed to be a month or two. Have you thought about where you'll live? <laughs> Here we go. The ride never ends, Jabba. Well, it's just been so hard for me, son. You know, I've been struggling with my mental health recently. You understand if it takes me a bit to readjust. Leah, you've been readjusting in my home for long enough, Jabba. Well, I can understand why you would get sick of me. Everyone eventually does. I should just end it all so I don't bother any of you anymore. <laughs> uh, you knew it was coming. Okay, there it is. The one card she's been playing for months. Under his breath, I can hear Leah say, so do it. 
And Ed slaps his arm. <laughs> Ed, uh, so if you feel that way, maybe it's time to accept some help. Maybe us cleaning that basement will help you get better. Oh, man, don't clean it up for her. Get her out. <laughs> oh, I cleaned up all, like, your bed and dresser and everything. Cleaned it right onto the front lawn. Cleaned it with a bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> Jabba. You know I have a bad back, son. And it's so hard to clean up. It's all been so hard and... Ed cuts her off. Well, what if we all help right now? We already started and Jabba then cuts Ed off. You went into my room. I told you to never go down there. How dare you violate my privacy? I mean, is she paying rent? You gotta pay rent in order to have privacy, as far as I'm concerned. There's a whole lot of yelling in this story. <laughs> I don't think anybody knows how to respond to yelling with just like a normal talking voice. It works a lot better if somebody starts screaming and you stay level, you know? But Ed doesn't do that. He screams right back and says, I found my goddamn cat down there. Madara's dead because of your garbage heap. You bring all types of men over here at all hours of the night and you chase Leah away. We are cleaning it and you are moving out. All right. Ed putting on his big boy pants. There you go. I'm sure she'll only threaten to end herself like 10 or 11 more times before she's fully moved out. <laughs> I was impressed that Ed managed to stand up to her that harshly. Truth being told, I didn't think that I would just be able to sit back and enjoy the show. Jabba is shocked at this point. Son, would you just leave me with nowhere to go? I might self-end if I end up homeless again. You wouldn't want that, would you? Don't put that on me. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Ed, there's a shelter down the road. You won't be homeless. Leah, if you hurry, you can make it before dinner. <laughs> Leah is so catty, bro. I think I remember that from the first few parts. And uh, I sort of enjoyed that. <laughs> Jabba. Please, son, I have nowhere else to go. Ed, you need to leave now. Jabba, fine, you bunch of bad words for gay people. See if I care. Obviously, you care pretty deeply. You're just upset that you lost. It's over. Goodbye and good riddance. Jabba then goes downstairs and makes a call. About an hour later, a beat up car pulls into the driveway and Jabba gets in. Turns out she did have somewhere to go, at least for a while, but I'm not sure why she wanted to stay with Ed so bad. At least she left without a fight, I guess. She rolling over to her pimp's house or something like that? <laughs> That's my guess. Now, that just leaves the cleaning part. So, okay, we get a shovel and a bag to retrieve what is left of Ed's cat so we can bury it. Jesus. How long had it been in the bag? I thought it was only missing for like three days. Ugh. After the small cat funeral, we then head into the house to assess the damage to the basement. Severe. <laughs> it was far too much for four regular people with no equipment to handle, so we decided to hire some professional cleaners. I tell Ed we might need a hazmat team and an exterminator to get this place clean, and he doesn't believe me, saying, eh, we could just get some cleaner and some bug spray. Do not cheap out on a job like this, okay? You want it to be back to normal? We gotta pay to get it back to normal. <laughs> so I just call the cleaner to come by, and, and they show up and say the same thing. Eventually, Ed caves and gets the exterminator, who tells us that the horde downstairs had attracted rats and roaches to the house, along with bed bugs, and they had been there for a while. Oh, cursed. <laughs> Rats, roaches, I can handle. Bed bugs, oh, that's, that's so nasty. The house would need to be tended, and it would take three days for the treatment to work, and Ed would need to replace most of his belongings. Lucky for him, with the money that Grandma left him, he still had more than enough to cover the expenses. 
Also, I got the amount that Ed received from his grandma wrong. Turns out he received about 500 grand, and it was being paid out in five payments of 125k. He was not only receiving just 125k, Jabba, however, only got about 12,000. That part was true. 500 grand, bro? <laughs> uh, all right, we, we live in all the easy streets. Ah, hook me up. <laughs> Thank you, Granny. So that solves like most of the mystery about why she was there, right? She was just hoping to leech off of his money or something like that. Anyways, the extermination itself cost Ed about two grand, mostly due to the bed bugs. I still think that dude overcharged Ed, but I don't know anything about pest control. So what he says goes. We do have some uh, pest control people that swing by the comment section sometimes. So let me know if he got overcharged. I'm sure OP would be interested as well. And replacing all his stuff wasn't cheap either, of course, but after the treatment was complete, we set to work on the cleaning. We got hazmat gear to handle the needles and the c down there, but that was at least the worst of it. Yeah, that's pretty bad, though. <laughs> after two weeks of cleaning and a follow-up to make sure the little buggers were gone, and thankfully they were, after a month in the state and many more efforts from all of us, Ed had finally rid himself of Jabba for good. With my work done, I knew it was about time for me to head back, so I got a flight for next week. Ed starts the whole couple's I missed you thing again and goes on about how happy he is to have his kawaii prince back again. Kind of cringe, but all right. <laughs> Just enjoy each other at the end of it all. Leah suggested that I get a hotel for the week, but Ed says that I could stay with him. Not in the basement. <laughs> Don't put me in the basement. I should have listened to Ed, honestly, but not because the house was still dirty. Let me ask y'all what happens when a couple who's been apart for a while finally gets back together. Ah, uh, well, just imagine the scene from Family Guy where Peter was spending the night with Cleveland during his anniversary. Ow, 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 ow. When's it gonna be my turn? Ow, ow. So after that night, I kindly thank them for their offer, but I get a hotel for my remaining time in the city. Yeah, it is a nice offer, but they, they do need some space, right? Update on where we are right now. OP still lives in North Carolina, still teaching, but fairly certain this will be my last year as I absolutely hate working in the public school system. Yeah, that's a bummer, man. I hope you get like a private school. Do you like teaching at all? Even if you go in a completely different direction, that's fine. Follow your passion as far as I'm concerned. Ed and Leah finally ended up married and are still quite happy together to this day. They couldn't do it immediately since Leah was a student at Ohio State at the time. Ed was working there and something about inappropriate relationships from Ed's boss prevented that. But now that Ed no longer works for the university, everything was fair game. It's always nice to see a happy ending, you know? Tie it up with the little bow. They truly were meant for each other. That's gorgeous. James now owns two semi-trucks and has someone working for him driving one of them. See? That's the end game, bro. Eventually you get three semi-trucks and then you say, you know what, I don't even want to drive the truck no more. All three of you guys go out there and just break me off at the end. Jabba got arrested for hooking again, seeing as this was her second arrest and her previous charges were revisited. She is currently awaiting trial, facing about a year in jail, last I heard. I still think that this line of work should be legal, but Seriously, the karma is too delicious for me to pass up. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't getting caught for that, she'd be getting caught for some other stuff. She is a shady, shady lady. She belongs behind bars. Maybe, you know, cool out for a little bit. Maybe you kick the china white. <laughs> Get yourself off the horse, if you know what I'm saying. If you if you dry out in jail for a little bit. I, I don't know. What I do know is karma. And that, my friends, concludes this hopefully last tale of my journey to reform Ed. I'm honestly not sure when the next story I write will be because for the time I'm still a teacher and the kids are still number one. Other than that, well, be nice and be great and until next time, readers. TLDR, my former neckbeard friend's neckbeard mother moves in and destroys his home, causing us to have a fight and we have to evict her.
Honestly, a delicious way to wrap up the saga. I, I do hope that she is gone for good, but you never can tell. Leg beards, like bed bugs, have a way of just coming back around all the time. But now Ed is in a truly committed relationship with Leah, and I'm sure Leah will do her best to keep Jabba out of the way. She is just such a foul beast, not only for her surroundings, but also like manipulating everybody around her. Like, oh, if, if you don't let me stay here, I'm totally going to end it. <laughs> okay. You know what? How many times can I hear this before I, I stop believing it? And it seems like Ed never would have stopped believing it. But luckily, he has good friends around that kind of saved him from himself. We'll go ahead and end this saga like we do with most sagas these days and uh we'll pull up one of them old song parodies and i hope that you guys will enjoy this is butter tendy mountains boom 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 one evening as the sun went down and the magic fire was slipping down the track came ram tide hiking and he said, boys, I'm not tipping. I'm headed for a land that's far away beside the euphoria fountains. So come with me. We'll go and see the butter tendy mountains in the butter tendy mountains. There's a land that's full of coom where the twenties grow on bushes and you sleep until the noon. Where the showers all are empty and the sun shines on no day. And the big old titties and the anime trees, the Mountain Dew Springs, where St. Adelaide schemes and the Butter Tendy Mountains. <laughs> in the Butter Tendy Mountains, all the chads have tiny cocks. And the leg beards leave Oz good alone, and the hippies all boof rocks. The Red X vids are full of cringe, and the waffles are all stomped. Oh, I'm bound to go where there ain't no hoe, where the cards don't fall, dice rolls don't blow, in the butter tendy mountains. In the butter tendy mountains, you never change coom socks, and the little streams of burger grease come a trickling down the rocks. Fellow beards have to tip their hats, and the Stacys all are blind. There's a lake of barbecue and honey mussy too. You can paddle all around it with your cute waifu in the butter tendy mountains. <laughs> in the butter tendy mountains, the friend zone's made of wind, and you can Naruto run out again just as soon as you are in. Ain't no short-handled katanas, no fedoras without brims, or I'm gonna stay where you tip all day, where they hung the dope that invented soap in the butter tendy mountains. <laughs> I'll see you all this come and fall in the butter tendy mountains. The beard rolled up his big blue eyes and said to Ramtide Friendy, I've tipped and boofed and rat trapped too, but I ain't seen any tendy. I've fapped and coomed till my shroom is sore, and I'll be damned if I simp any more to bear the stench of some leg beard wench in the butter tendy mountains. <laughs> uh, another masterpiece from Tato Fair. Put it to bed, you know? <laughs> I love ending the sagas with some parody songs. That's like the, the, the best thing ever. An ode to the one and only Ramtide based on Big Rock Candy Mountains. That classic hobo song. Much easier to sing than the uh, last one that we did a day or so ago. <laughs> Thank God for that. Uh, but I do hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. Maybe share the video around if you should like. That compilation coming soon. I do promise it. Also, check out the links in the description, plugs, playlist, podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Teespring. If you're trying to rock that merch, we did live stream this whole thing on Twitch, but I got other stuff, you know, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, etc., etc. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I'd also like to thank my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous channel members and Patreon patrons right now. Jerry, Jerry much. Uh, so thank you, too. Starting with our channel members, Train Boy at One Gay Cop, Valley Eyed Crane, Sheeza, a Tiny Void, Angel Dark, Bedazzled Misery, Skylar Rain, The Fez Wearer, Rosie Rainbow, Slow Spooner Jerry, 
<laughs> Sean Cantwell, Heaven Sent 777, Robert Thibodeau, Jackie McQuitty, Grim Strive, AJ Collins, Tooth Plushy, Corey Arts, Kelly Clark, Florence and Glaver, Dungeon Bat, Billy Dean, Robert Waits, Brandon Ashcraft, Phantom Danica, or Gaby Steve, Skyler May, Morningstar, The Gypsy Barber, Fire Drake, Samantha, Desk Flagship, Buy Two, Get One Hand. Heading over to Patreon, we've got Harley Owen, Robert Waits, Camille Sarah, Chance for Blue Kraken, Vixie, Ellipses, Captain Cloud, Jerry Hong Kong, Deku, Esteban, or Gaby Steve, Pete Thought with a Mac and Boss from downtown, one Jerry, Faithful Forgiveness, PCB, <laughs> Santa Jerry, Silo Revolver, a very tired Jerry, a few that, a Justy Dargonian Jerry, Aaron Jerry, and Frankenberry, ain't that a hot bitch though? <laughs> Assassin Punk Jerry, Bang Bang, Baby Jerry, Benji and the Jets, Billy D, Bitch Gremlin, Blade the Hero, Browns Kraken, Commander J Tank, Comrade Mooney, Destiny Piper, Dr. Larks, Aaron Error, Erratic Mechanic, East Bars, Fluxer, I don't have friends, I got tendies. <laughs> Uh, Rose Number Studios, Fire Drake, Gizmo Jack, Hadrian BR, Irish Pirate, Lost the Blue Marble and a Mutiny. It's time to get it back. Ayanalo, J.M. Coon, Jerry Smith, Jerry Kitsune, the original Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry the Outlaw, Mother Trucker, Hong Kong, Jerry, 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 I'm begging you, please don't take my beard. <laughs> Jerry, Jukebox, Jerry, Cage Alex 9, Kira, Crewy, Cuddly, Kraken, Lady Italian, Grey, Undino, Lady in Awakening, Lauren Crow, Legitimate Girl, Lord Jerry, O, Leader of the Thunder Jerry's, Luke Vex was a race car driver, he was a good friend of mine. <laughs> like and subscribe, Milady Nix, Melgar the Destroyer, Metal Fracta, not another Jerry, but he is though. Paragon Soul, Phantom of the Pine, Jerrykins and Jerry Beth, Queens, Quaaludes and Quagmires, Redwin, Rose, Jerry Miller, Sarita the Lolita, Scarlet's Coven, <laughs> Sergeant Gang Cop, Burger of the Law, Silo Whip, Stephanie Gunner, Sign Up to Booster, Krillin Tamago, the Gypsy Barber, the Littlest Who, the Watch Your Fusky, this is even my final beard, <laughs> Tick Jerry, try to find another bomb to get back to the real world, Vanguard Angel BC3, Viking Jerry, Wicked Attack, Stephanie Gargoyle, or Clay, Arnold Boys, even the weebs, we can see the L train it. Maybe. <laughs> a normal Jerry. All right, Red. For you, I bring Doritos, but I can't get expertise if they are drag beans. I know what to do. Emeraldy Tank, Emer Alder, another stupid hipster, Atomic Jerry Zillabad, Penny Lake, Bartender Keely, a big dead wolf, Promise Pine Horse Radish, the original different Jerry, Cake Jerry, <laughs> California Jerry Girl, Cargus, Chicago Panda, Corey does commissions. Wow. Oh, now. Yeah, I got that one. <laughs> That's why I'm leaving it. Cryptides, the Far Jerry, the Deftitude, the Dilf Jerry, Dwarfy Dude, Five Nights at Jerry's. Get to the doodles, also commissions open. Jerry Boo's daughter, Ghost of Alpha Greymon365, Half Slavic Jerry in a tracksuit, Heath Knot, Hydra Jerry Solman, Jace Christensen, Janitor Jerry's back from the abyss to clean up after the teenage beards. Good luck, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, <laughs> Gerald of Rivia, Jerry, but with two S's and E, Jerry Springer, the results are in. You are not the neckbeard. Jerry the sussy baka, Jerry his mom has got it going on. Jerry Alda Rivera, Jerry Roxers, Jerry role playing game, Kid Marvelous, Lucian Lovecraft, Machia CD, maybe next time, Miss Duchess, Mr. Gas Mask, Non Viper, Not Invisible, Angel Raptor, Seldon Dark, Snom Jerry, the snary if you didn't know, Spoonie the Rope, Spoopy, scary, Jerry Tongue. Hey, we're in October for reals now. Susan Beard, if anyone has one more fun, I'm taking all the attendees. Yeah, you can say heck once as a treat. Thank you so much. <laughs> Techno dubs, the copy Jerry two knives. Third stuff, this is purely a mercantile transaction. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it is, though. To Infinity Jerry and Beyond, Tokyo Bird, Unkale, Bond, Venom Jerry, Throws two liter Mountain Dew, Grow my neck, beer, grow! And Jerry Time, Hold Red X Morpher, Hygiene, this Jerry Time, Hold Red X Morpher, Humility, and thank you to my one dollar patrons as well. Bless up to all the Jerry's and not Jerry's alike, beautiful people that you are. I appreciate you. You know, uh, I hope you'll be able to support monetarily, but if you aren't, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow in order to do so. You need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some more Red X videos. Or taking a trip to the Butter Tendy Mountains, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved. You are worthy. You definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, bye-bye. Uh,